What's up, everyone? This is the uh, May live stream, the little spring cleaning sale. This is a bit early. We typically start the show about, I don't know, 10 minutes early or so, just so we can work out any bugs that might come up. There's always some little bit of adventure that, that pops up to, to throw a wrench in whatever it is we're doing. So last time, um, I think that, oh yeah, that's right, the broadcasting software decided to just not allow text at all. So we figured out what was the issue there. So hopefully we don't run into that anymore. So we shall see. Um, since we're all here and early, I'm gonna give some folks the opportunity to, to hop into stream and we can go over kind of how a live sale works. And just let me know in chat, I'm kind of just getting my windows arranged here. Um, how everything sounds, and if you need me to um, up my volume or for whatever. So just let me know in chat if, uh, if the audio sounds right. Now, I have to say up front that we're running with a, a skeleton crew today. It's me, and it is Ben on the camera, and that means that I am in charge of chat. So there's likely going to be some people getting away with some stuff that I just don't see, if I do see, you're gone. I am, I'm a trigger finger when it comes to banning people. Because that's what I do for fun during these live shows. <laughs> Talk coral and ban people. So hello, everyone. Uh, seeing some folks chime in. So another thing, if, if, I, if I happen to miss your question, sorry. I'm not exactly always uh, on top of my game when it comes to chat. So good. So hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. So we have uh, already South Africa, Norway, Montreal, Galveston, Texas, Arlington, Virginia. Excellent. All right. Um, how does this work? How does this live show work? Let's go over that real quick. If you'd like to purchase, you have to go to titlegardens.com and follow the live sale link. And you'll see a numbered list of the items there. Should, there should be about 230 something plus the, the shipping module. That shipping module, it's a $39.99 flat rate. Uh, that's for everywhere in the continental US. Um, and it, shipping is free for orders over 250. Cannot send coral to Hawaii, it's illegal. And Puerto Rico and Alaska costs a little bit more. Uh, another thing about shipping I should mention is that since this is Memorial Day weekend, FedEx is not open on Monday. So most, if not all, of these packages should be going out Tuesday for delivery Wednesday. So um, I'll, I'll bring that up a few more times throughout the show. And lastly, uh, in order to actually purchase an item, uh, you have to fully check out with it. Just having it in your shopping cart does nothing. Sorry. So you have to complete the checkout process. Um, most of these things uh, should be fairly easy to get a hold of. We don't have anything super duper rare or crazy that you, you, know, you have to spam the purchase button. But in case uh, you do want to make sure you get the stuff, you can just check out each time, select local pickup for, for that. And just make sure you pay for shipping once. If you happen to pay for shipping more than once, don't worry about it. We, we refund all that stuff. Uh, Patreon. If you wanted to put some coins in the tip jar for Patreon, these folks have uh, donated $5 or more, and so they get a shout out during the live show here. So thank you so much for, to Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave, Nate, Louise, Nancy, and Jeff. And I'll give them additional shout outs in the future. But if you're interested in, um, in becoming a donor to Title Gardens, you can go to patreon.com slash title gardens. Okay, so let me see. What else are in my notes here? Yeah, so what's going on with this little uh, little background video I'm showing? If that looks unfamiliar to you, that is uh, one of my friends' tanks. His name is Nathan. Not Nate Bowler, who is one of the Patreon folks, but it's uh, Nathan Gist. And I've done a video on his tank. Well, I've probably done about four videos on his tank probably about now. He's one of the guys that... that uh, he keeps a bunch of really, really cool corals, really, really nice tank, gets explosive growth. So a lot of um, the corals that we purchase, we get ex extra cuttings from his aquarium. He'll be joining us, um, not right away, probably in about an hour or so. 
he's got got some things to do this weekend, and then he's going to stop in and say hello. So if you uh, if you like his tank and are curious as to how, how he does stuff, um, save your questions for him, and uh, let's see if he can provide us some answers. Uh, lastly, uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, and we should be ready to go here in a little bit. So uh, welcome everybody in chat. And they're taking a peek. Alrighty. So I'll put my notes away for just a moment. We're so far pretty good on all this stuff. And if stream dies, let me know in chat. I'm sure you will. So yeah, let's see, hopping right into it, let's show what the actual corals are going to be. Okay, so this first coral here, uh, starting off our little zoanthid collection, these are some sun cellas. So anthids, for whatever reason, are really liking the springtime here. Let's go to number two. There's a, oops, uh, let me, oh, I'm, already, I'm already slipping, I'm already slipping, guys. Uh, let's see here, coral list. So this is item number two, sorry about that. Already slipping. It's like not even, it's technically not even two o'clock. I'm starting, I'm starting early, I guess. But yeah, like I was saying, um, the zoas have done really well this spring. A lot of times the springtime tends to be really hard on the corals here because we're getting additional sunlight, um, additional temperatures, and that causes all kinds of complications with, um, with nutrient because it's when you, obviously when you increase the amount of light coming in that's just extra energy and that goes pretty much all into algae and just kind of suffocates these guys out. Let's move on to number three. These are some wild paleothoas. They're probably zoanthids, so I'll change it right here. Most likely zoas. There's very few things here that, I, that I'm convinced are um, are, are re true pallies. You'll, you'll see a lot of zoas that look like this that are called pallies, but I don't think so. Usually paleothoa, like the, one of the biggest differences between a zoa and a pally is that pallies will incorporate substrate into their flesh, and that's typically not what goes on here. And let's see, moving on. Let's go to number four. These are some Fiji rainbows. Yeah, as far as like extension and coloration, um, a lot of a lot of the zoos are doing really well. I think the flashlight's blowing out the highlights just a tad. So when uh, you see that that blue streak go across the corals, what's going on there is uh, is Ben is using uh, like a little LED flashlight to uh, to bring out some fluorescence. Um, the lights that we're using over our tanks are primarily T5s, so you're seeing a combination of blue plus and coral, coral plus. There could be some other bulb here and there, maybe like an aqua blue special, maybe a purple plus, but I would say the vast majority of the two uh, bulbs we use are the ATI blue plus and the coral plus. So far, so good. Next up, um, the Fiji rainbow zoas. I was actually having a conversation with um, with one of the suppliers here, and he uses a mix of everything. But I think recently in his new facility, he purchased something like 120 fixtures of Radeon Pro G4s, and he's really hoping to get like good coloration from his corals and stuff like that. And we were kind of going back and forth as to. Um, what makes more sense going with with a T5 or with um, with radions or just LED in general? Because we we've we've done both and we have, we've gotten mixed results, so we're kind of still throwing around ideas. 
so far, um, I, I really do like the, um, the T5s, but at the same time, I uh, haven't re replaced all the bulbs yet. So let's go to the next coral here, number six. I haven't replaced uh, the bulbs yet in this, in this facility since I've really transitioned to a lot of T5. And I think that I counted over like a hundred and something bulbs that need to be swapped out. That's once or twice a year. So I'm not really looking forward to that. Okay, I just happened to catch somebody asking a question. How much risk is there putting a flame angel into my tank? Um, yeah, I don't trust them at all. I don't like any dwarf angels in reefs. Usually, um, I, get, I get a phone call from someone asking, I just don't get any polyp extension. And I'm like, what fish do you have? They're like, oh, I have a flame angel. I'm like, yeah, that's him. He's like, and it'll always be. He does, but he doesn't pick at anything. It's like, yeah, because he's smarter than you. And that's why he gets to pick at all your corals and go undetected. Trust me, it's a flame angel. Yeah, not a fan. Okay, next up, number seven. These are some cotton candy soas. <clears throat> I'd love a video on Radeon G4s. I've heard good things, but I'd love your perspective. So Jeff, I don't know. Um, we've had Radeons before, and the biggest downside for to get my opinion on it is I'm in the weirdest setup here. I'm in a greenhouse. So a lot of um, a lot of high-end fixtures just kind of die out here, just for the, because it's such a harsh environment. It's very humid almost all the time. Winter, summer, it's almost always humid, and so that just it corrodes uh, a lot of the, the electronics. It messes with the fans, and they, they get gummed up or just die altogether. And if you know anything about like an AI fixture or any fixture that requires fans, they just they over they heat overload and they just shut down. Next up, number eight. So I tend to be less favorable to the higher end fixtures that require um, like active cooling like that just because of the, the nature of a greenhouse. If I had like a, a warehouse that had better uh, humidity control and stuff like that, um, I could probably evaluate their actual light a little bit better. But um, it's, it's one of those uh, I guess just fundamental problems with running lights here. So like the, the really, really cheap Amazon lights I have here, they don't have any fans. So it's basically if the fixture dies, it's the ballast. And that's a lot less likely to happen than, than a fan. Okay, next up, number nine. These are some purple passion zoas. Okay, let's go to 10. It's weird how like the focus is like so far off going from one to the other. It's like the next coral is like immediately thrown off. Out of curiosity, what's the f-stop that you're using? Is it 2.8 or something? 3.2, yeah, that's why. Because it's a very shallow depth of field. For, for all the you photo geeks that are following along with, the, with that little bit of conversation. Okay. Next up, let's go to 11. These are some red people eaters. I want to check one thing here. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to see how many people were actually on stream and have to like move windows around. So, I don't like I don't really ever talk about it, but I'm broadcasting from a laptop and so my screen real estate is, is somewhat limited, so there's like windows behind windows behind windows behind windows, and so I don't get to, to see everything all at once. Okay, let's go to number 12. These are some red people eaters again, slightly different. Have you ever dealt with the dinos, like dinoflagellates? Um, yeah, I mean, like generally speaking, I think most people have them in some form or another. And we just keep keep up on it by scraping or magneting off the glass pretty much every day. I don't know too many tanks that don't have some some level of persistent dinoflagellate issue. I mean, when you start up a new tank, there's a lot of dinoflagellate um, blooms going on, but that that typically goes away. But then you kind of have like this little little chronic baseline that you have to 
to maintain. Okay, let's go to 13. These are some radioactive dragon eyes. Have you ever had to deal with zoopox? Yeah, um, it, it happens occasionally. Uh, zoanthid pox, for those that, that are kind of unfamiliar, they just look like little white pimples. Not, it's not even a pimple, it's, it's just like a white, uh, white speckle that shows up mo mostly on the base of zoanthids, and it's kind of like a form of illness. Um, they're really easy to take care of. You can, you can dip it in any number of things. The most popular thing that, that people um, dip in is uh, called furane 2. Um, it's usually used for freshwater fish, but it actually does kind of work for uh, zoanthids and zoopox. Uh, the other thing you can just do is to go through and just kind of take a little, um, like a metal scraper or something, and just kind of like pop them individually like zits. Blow that away, and just make sure that they get um, additional flow, because I think a lot of times uh, these things get zoopox purely because they're not getting enough flow to begin with, and detritus is settling on them. Next up, go to one to a fourteen. It will be another radioactive dragon eye. Uh, no shipping to Europe, sorry. Uh, shipping is only to continental U.S. and Puerto Rico and Alaska for a little bit extra. Yeah, shipping uh, overseas to Europe is, is is quite a quite a hassle. Customs and and CITES treaties and the cost of it would be astronomically high. And the person on the other end would have to have all of his import uh, paperwork and everything, um, you know, well established. So generally speaking, if it's just going to be some home, like a home consumer, there's no way it's going to happen. Shipping might be something like $300 per box just for the shipping charges alone. It could be a lot. That was a radioactive dragonite. Let's go to the next coral, number 15, which is a peach passion zoa. Next up, number 16. So let's see. Do you have to buy online? If you live near, can you just drive over? Well, we're not actually open to the public generally, but we do have visitors by appointment. So if you do want something from the live show here, um, we do have multiples of just about everything, but if there's something that's that's unique, um, it's, it's a good idea to purchase it on the live show um, and then schedule um, an appointment to come get it. Next up, one or seventeen. As I was about to say, one seventeen, but I don't know. Getting ahead of myself here. So, how many corals are there today? I think it's like two hundred and thirty something. We're blowing through these too. It's like I need to. I should probably even slow down a little bit, just because I need to to stall so Nathan can come here and and actually talk about his tank. But we've got a little bit of a mix of everything, probably less SPS this go around, uh, probably more Zoas. So being uh, kind of the, uh, the May spring cleaning type sale, a lot of the price points are lower. Like for example, like number 17 here is $10. Number 18, let's go ahead to that, is a Twizzler Zoa that's 15. So uh, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot more stuff that uh, is at a lower price point and we're giving a little bit of a deeper discount in general. So, uh, yeah, so if, you're not going to see, I guess, like super duper duper high end stuff, which most people don't buy anyway because it's, you know, hundreds of dollars. So a little bit, a little bit of a change, I guess, compared to some of some of the previous shows. Excuse me. Okay. Moving on. Let's go to 19. Yeah. And... Again, like springtime can be rough on corals, so uh, we kind of wanted to focus on the corals that are doing better than others. Um, and right now, like some of the SPS are looking kind of 
kind of frumpy, even though that we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves with water changes. We've been doing a really good job lately. Like I would say in the past couple weeks, um, there were, there was probably a stretch where we were doing something in the neighborhood of 300 to almost 500 gallons of water change per day for an entire week. So it was, it was a lot just to kind of combat the, the fluctuation that we get in springtime. And the things that benefited the most clearly, clearly were these zoas. Next up, let's go to 20. I would go as far as to say that these zoas are probably um, as extended and as colorful as they've ever been. So Matthew Yee is wondering, is there a way to prevent bubble tip anemones from moving around a lot? I don't think so. I think they kind of they kind of do their own thing. Some some decide to stay stay put, but I would never um, I would never bet on it sticking around there. Right. Let's go to 21. These are some mellow yellow zoas. Uh, that reef tank kid 125G. What salt brand? We use like a weird brand and almost seemingly nobody else uses called Omega C and it's it's entirely based on their ability to get it to me conveniently what do you use to make up that much RODI water I have a thousand gallon per day RO system 22 Is there a way to see what the past items were before the end of the sale recap? I think, if, if I recall correctly, you can scrub back and forth in the timeline itself. So when you're watching the video, I think you could just like drag it back and then, and if you wanted to go back to live, you just drag it all the way back to the right, something like that. I don't know what browser you're using, but I remember uh, folks being able to scrub back in the timeline, even like during the show. So I don't, somebody else in chat, maybe you can confirm that if that's the case, you've done that before. Um, but I think that works. Okay, let's go ahead to 23. These are some blow pops. Slightly different color, more from the ones that we, uh, we showed earlier. Very likely just because it was from a different aquarium. Um, you'd be surprised at how different corals can look. Even though they they have basically the same water chemistry, basically the same lighting, it's just these little changes can drastically affect uh, coral coloration. I'd love to see a video where you run us through a week or so of maintenance on your system. Do you have anything like that currently? No, usually like when we're doing maintenance, I'm all stressed out or something. and It's, it's a messy, sloppy, awful process and I don't feel like getting a camera. But we might do something like that. I'll, I'll tell you right off the top, whatever it is that you're doing in your tank, it's probably better than what we do out here. I mean, you, it, I would argue that the way that we do water changes is way too harsh. Like, and I, I wish that we would have additional water storage just for um, new makeup water and new salt water and just to let that um, stir around for like a day before using it. But a lot of our stuff is, our, our corals are extra tough for being here. That's definitely the truth. All right, 24. <clears throat> okay, thanks Tracy. Yes, you can scroll back in the video. There you go. What's a better camera brand, Nikon or Canon? Um, they're actually a lot more similar than they are different. Uh, I think that uh, Canon's higher end is for, for video and cinema. I mean, I don't think Nikon is even trying when it comes to that. So if you're looking at doing video, um, I think Canon is a lot better. Um, for If you're talking about still photography, um, either one is fine. I mean, they're, it, as far as stills go, they're really, really similar. Next up, 25 Fiesta Zoas. I could talk all day about cameras and camera equipment. And a lot of times when you're purchasing into a camera system, it's more about the lenses than the actual camera bodies anyway. So some people really like uh, Nikon, or I should I, I've, I've said Nikon my whole life, but it's, it's Nikon. Like I should know this, like I've been to Japan enough, it's Nikon, but I, I've always say Nikon, like a Midwesterner. 
Uh, a lot of people like uh, Nikon glass, but um, I, I've, I've kind of stuck with, with Canon for the most part, uh, just because of, um, I think their their lens lineup is a little bit more, more di di like just diverse, and, and some of the, the lenses I like a lot more. The, like a couple of lenses aren't even available in, the, in, in Nikon land, so there's that. Okay, let's go to 26. But yeah, for so for, because I do so much video and, and, and very little, I don't know if that's true. Ben here uses the stills camera a lot more than I do. I use the video stuff, so since I'm so video focused, I think, well, Canon makes the most sense because they actually have a cinema line, whereas I don't think Nikon does. Okay, next up, 27. <clears throat> Have you ever thought of being open to the public? Not really. That's, that's never really entered the picture. I mean, part of the reason is that we're on um, essentially agricultural land, and I don't know if, uh, if a retail establishment would be good or allowed or anything like that. And the other thing is just the way that we work here, it wouldn't work well with, uh, with walk-ins. Uh, let's see. And so that's why we're, we're by appointment. Uh, do you think I can keep a fox face in my 40 gallon reef? Uh, they get they get kind of big. Um, probably not for that long. Next up, 28. Yeah, I mean some of the ones that we have are like a good eight inches or so. They're they're big. They get big and they eat a lot. I mean, our, ours are almost like an inch and a half thick, of, if not two inches, they're giant, giant fish. Okay, let's move on, number 29. How common is green cyanobacteria? Uh, I've seen it here and there. The Kessel shimmer won't let my phone focus. Yeah, Kessels do put a lot of shimmer into the water. Um, Got to go get a camera for my channel. That helps. I mean, as as good as uh, phones are getting, um, did it doesn't really compare that well to like a dedicated camera or anything like that. So after you go to item two hundred, you're done for the day. Um, yeah, pretty much. Well, done as far as this stuff goes, I guess. Okay. Let's go next up to number 30. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to tell me, just, just do it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Hadn't occurred to me that we're already on number 30 and we're still on Zoas and I'm looking at uh, the, the next list of, uh, of corals and we're going to be doing Zoas and Pallies for a good long time here so I hope you guys like it <laughs> and by good long time I mean 50s 50s okay sorry just checking one little thing here wow there's a lot of people in. So usually there's like 120 something. We're already up, up to close to 150. What can I say? These it's it's fun to hang out and talk about about corals once in a while. Okay. So these are some mandarin zoas here. Let's go to 31, which is a another mandarin. Looks like a, a fish wants to make a cameo. One of my favorite fish, copper band butterfly. I can already tell who he is. Do you run dehumidifiers in your greenhouse? No, 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 no. That wouldn't work out. Um, it, it's practically impossible. It's, it's 5,000 gallons of, of water and 1,300 square feet. So that dehumidifier would just run itself dead. Okay, next up, 32. These are some cherry tomatoes. This is a fairly recent uh, addition to our collection. And since we've gotten it, I think it's gotten a lot better looking. The, the blue is a lot more uh, pronounced and the orange has gotten a little bit more uh, vivid. Uh, 
Let's see. Melanaris Rast or Six Line? Uh, we have both here, but I would say that for most of our tanks, um, uh, we have Melanaris's. So that's another uh, case of fish doing something and you're not really always seeing them do stuff. Let's go to 33. Um, I don't, and I, I see them picking at stuff. I never so when, if I see a certain pest, I put it in there, and I never see the wrasses eat that particular pest. But that pest issue goes away, so it's clearly getting to it eventually. I just never really see it. So it's kind of like the dwarf angel problem. You never see them picking at your corals, but your corals aren't exactly growing. You have no polyp extension. Blah blah blah. So I've noticed that the melanarises seem to. Um, be very good at, at eliminating a lot of little problematic things here and there, more so than a six-line wrasse would. Uh, we've also been experimenting with like these banana wrasses. Let's go to 34. These are some Green Bay Packers Zoas. Yeah, this is probably about as, as good as they've looked in a really long time. Um, but these banana wrasses, they, a lot of them we've lost for completely mysterious reasons. Like one day they're fine, the next day they're on their side breathing heavily, um, next day they're fine again, next day they're on their side again and they're just gone. And it's like, there's like no rhyme or reason. Um, it'll be fine in like one set of tanks, so it's all sharing the same water. And then just one of them in one little corner of the tank is down. And Melanarises didn't seem to have that same issue. And so, like the, the the variety of that ras, it was like a, a crisis ras, which I think is like a, a yellow chorus. And then we also have like the purple and yellow, which is very similar. And so we still have like I don't know, at least a dozen of those swimming around. But we had a couple of weird instances with those. All right, let's go to thirty-five. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, what salt do you use? We use uh, omega C. Um, aggression issues with fish. The best thing you can do for aggression issues is to turn off the lights and rearrange rock work. That kind of breaks up their social boundaries. Next up, 36. But tanks are really aggressive. I, um, that's one thing that if I could do differently, I would probably do is have no tangs in any of my tanks. Obviously for you guys, like it's your, it's your hobby. You want the fish that you, know, you want to be looking at all the time and whatnot. For us, a lot of the fish do work here, and so if a tang is preventing me from putting in a fish that would do a job, kind of cramping my style there, tang buddy. So I, if, if, if I had it my way, I would probably have almost no tangs and replace that, uh, that herbivore slot with just fox faces. Not that fox faces are perfect, I mean fox faces would love to eat many of these zoas for example. Um, but it's only like our fresh cuttings. So again, not usually a problem for a home hobbyist, but for like an aquaculture outfit, um, they like to come and just eat new stuff. So we're always providing them new stuff because we're cutting and regluing. Next up, 37. These are some lime zingers, I believe. How do you deal with the palytoxin from fragging all those zoas? Strangely uh, poorly. So palytoxin is more prevalent in Paleothella rather than in Zoanthids. Uh, Zoanthus does have some, um, but it depends on which kind. You can never really know. So if you wanted to play it safe, you know, do the whole glove routine, and if you're really scared, you can cover your face. We don't. Whatever you do, don't like put it into an oven or something, or, or a microwave or something dumb like that. Don't cut it with a knife and then use that knife to cut a fruit that you're about to eat. Just be smart about it. Next, 38. Uh, why are Zoa so temperamental? Uh, typically, they're not so much temperamental as they are really susceptible to a lot of problems. So, meaning they they can get some weird infection issues, and they their like rogues gallery of potential pests is easily triple every other corals. So, sea spiders, sea slugs flatworms, weird copepods that you've never seen before, certain fish that eat that shouldn't eat anything but will 
go ahead and sample a small zoa here or there. There could be a lot of problems that just descend upon zoas. But if you, if you kind of eliminate all that risk, they tend to be really, really robust. Next up, 39. Will you guys be at Reef of Palooza, New York? Uh, no plan to do that so far. Generally speaking, if I have time to get away from my greenhouse here, I take that opportunity to leave the country. So for the international folks in chat, you guys are more likely to see me if I go, um, if I take some days off than going to a trade show in the United States. That's just how it is. Like, I have to take every opportunity to go on vacation whenever I can, and when that time comes, I am gonzo. Next up, 40. To, to put it into perspective, I've been to Japan and Europe more times than I've been to New York in my whole life. And Chica New York and Chicago combined, like, easily. So, yeah, when I go, I go really, really, really far away. I guess I shouldn't count the times I go to Chicago to take a connecting flight to go to Asia or something. Then in that case, yeah, I probably go to Chicago a lot. Okay, let's see number 41. These are some Smurfette Zoas. So folks are always asking for things that are blue. Um, and in the hobby, there's not a lot of things that are blue, but here is one such selection. What is your opinion on Niger triggers in a reef? Um, I've seen it happen before. I'm not a huge fan of that. Typically, again, because it limits what other things you can put in your tank. Like, for example, if you really wanted to put in like peppermint shrimp for aptasia control, that might not go so well with a Niger trigger. Things like that could happen. Next up, 42. These are some Mordor Zoas. This is a new thing in our collection as well. Um, Trying to think. So, like for ex for example, we've got one tank that has a um, a harlequin tusk. So they're not reef safe in the sense that um, they'll eat crustaceans and mollusks and stuff like that. So they're not going to bother fish. They're not going to bother coral. But if you needed to put in something like a crab or a shrimp to do a particular task, there you go. You can't have it. Or you can for about five minutes. What lighting do your Zoas grow best under? Uh, probably no such thing as best, just, and for, for no other reason than like we're in a greenhouse, light changes all the time. But I've got I've I've been quite a fan of um, of T5 so far. But there's plenty of folks that have a lot of success with um, with LED as well. I don't think Zoas are quite that picky when it comes to light. 43. These are 2D fruity Zoas. How do you begin with this venture of aquaculture and corals for profit? Like, what did you start with and what can you actually say helped you take off as a pro coral breeder? Uh, um, I think just longevity more than anything else. This was like a part-time thing kind of in the background for a lot of years before it ever became something that I could do full-time. So I was doing business and law and stuff uh, for a long time and I just kind of like sunk a little bit of money here and there into this over the years. Um, I got a lot of help from friends and family um, and also we won a lot of money in a business plan competition that at least for the first part of that stint just helped pay the bills which that's all there were. There were bills, there's no sales. So a lot of times it, it is just you know just having just doing it in the background until one day you can stop doing your day job and, and do this full time. Jumping into it and quitting your job, I would not recommend to anybody. These are number 44. These are some green uh, peppered agave. And again, likely zoas. So I'll just go ahead and change that for you. Okay. Hey, what's up? Nathan's here. You are early, sir. I know. I'm half hour early. Is that all right? Yeah, come on. Crash the party? Yep. You're, 
you need an appointment. It's like your appointment was at three o'clock. Have a seat. Please wait outside. <laughs> okay. Am I supposed to get in now? Uh... Yeah, get in, get in here. Can you see yourself? There you go. Right. So everyone, this is uh, this is Nathan. This is his tank. Oh. And uh, so I was I was mentioning to the to the folks earlier um, that I often not often enough, but I, I often go to his tank to shop. So we get some stuff from, from uh, wholesalers and things like that, like importer types. However, I try as much as I can to, to get some stuff from local hobbyists as well. Um, and so, yeah, Nathan has had a thriving tank for years. You guys have seen it featured on this channel quite a bit. Um, did you get like a tank of the month or some, something at any the point? tank spotlight. I don't know if it's tank of the month, but just a spotlight on spotlight. Um, that reef to reef. Okay. Nice. So these guys are just, so we were going over um, a lot of zoanthid type stuff. And so there's a lot of questions and comments of, um, of that. But if you have any questions for, for Nathan, uh, just throw it into chat here. I have a question. Why do my zoanthids not do well? My pallies do. The bigger polyp ones do very well, but so the something do something well. like this 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 year does well. Yeah, the bigger polyp ones for whatever reason, but you know. Huh. Um, I don't know. I mean, it could just be like Fruit Loops. The small those are, I consider those smaller ones or Eagle Eyes. Let's go to forty five, Ben. It could just be. I mean, you have like a ton of fish, and I mean, could something like that be bugging them? I wonder. Like. Just because just giant tangs can sometimes just say, oh, here's a new frag of something or the other. Let's just rip yeah. one of those off and see if that tastes good. No, because they kind of just close up and melt away. Oh. It's, it's not like they just disappear overnight. Oh, that's yeah. weird. And it, so, uh, so Nathan has got a, a big show tank and then like a frag tank like right next to it that shares the same water. And so that happens in both tanks? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. You need to get better at this it is hobby. Weird. It is weird. It's, it's one of the few frustrating things that I've ever Let's go to uh, 46. Well, I recognize these guys. Yeah, those are, just, those are some bounce mushrooms. They're overpriced. I got charged way too much when I got them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who would do that? you got to watch out who you buy those from. Yeah. It's a terrible idea. All right. Next up, 47. Second grouping of toxic revenge zoas here. Yeah, I mean, th th like certain things can do so well. I mean, like I, we just like these guys. If I bought them, I know they would not. They just. Are you running a uh, like bio pellets. bio pellets? So are your phosphates and nitrates like super duper? No, they're not. They're not. They're not low. So what's so what's not low for phosphate? Point one four. Yeah, it's definitely not that low. No. But, I mean... And if I go lower than that, like with GFRs, everything gets affected. So my tank's, like, used to it. Okay, so it's so 0.14. Yeah, definitely not that low. Like, I'm usually in 0.12 to 0.18, often 0.14. That's, that's kind of... I just... I don't bother with it if it's in that range. Huh. Let's go to 48. So, um, the other thing... So nitrate is, what, like 5 or 10? Yeah, right in that range. So I'm not starving them. It's weird how so much stuff you can you can test for in the hobby that people generally don't for whatever reason. But then what you can test for oftentimes doesn't give you the complete picture either. Yeah. So right now my that and just regular discosoma mushrooms are kind of disappearing, melting slowly. So I'm just doing large water changes. Yeah, and see what happens. There you go. This guy's not cooperating. Like two thirds of his polyps aren't even open. Let's go to forty nine. So, forty nine. Yeah. Okay. So Bay Area reefs. Hey Than, if I send you a warrior shirt, would you wear it for the next live stream? Hell no. <laughs> Why would I want to wear some team that's about to get swept in the finals? That's terrible. <laughs> so yeah. I was thinking about that a little bit more. I'm like, yeah, the Cavs can they can handle them. And I was like. Oh wait, they they did add Kevin Durant. Yeah, to a team that like was awfully good. But, yeah, we went. Let's, let's go to fifty. Yeah, I don't know. see. The thing is, like, 
like the, the the smart bet is the Golden State Warriors are going to win the finals, right? That's like the smart. If I bet. had to put money down that mattered, that's what I would. Bet. Except, I've made a rule that I'm not going to bet against LeBron James ever again. Especially with Kyrie too. Yeah, as I was like, I I, I just can't do it. Like, and Kevin loves doing very well. It's we shouldn't. We, the, the Cavs shouldn't have won last year, and they did, but like sheer force of will. So, uh, if you know what, if if you have if you beat the Cavs, God bless you. But I am not gonna bet yeah. on that. Like, no, you gotta beat you gotta beat LeBron, and good on you. Next up, fifty-one. That's a nice one. There was that Darth Maul. Fifty was. That's a nice. One. Fifty was. Yeah, fifty-one sort of some picking golds. Oh, those are nice. Too. Yeah, like especially when you hit it with the, the right with lighting. the LED. Yeah. Good. Dan is a Cavs fan, so I'm trying not to bring him to the right side. Dude, I can't. the Warriors are so annoying. It's like, I, I'm so annoyed by that team. Tuesday shipping. Tuesday shipping. Okay. So, uh, a quick reminder. Let me bring up my notes here. Uh, so, for the folks that are purchasing corals, um, typically we ship out Monday for delivery Tuesday, but because of the Memorial Day holiday, uh, FedEx is closed on Monday, so we're going to be sending stuff out Tuesday, mostly Tuesday for delivery Wednesday, unless uh, you guys need to make some special arrangements or anything like that. Okay. Moving on. 52. It's going to be a fun series. I hope it's going to be a fun series. Like, if, if the Cavs got swept in the finals, would you be surprised? I don't know if I would be surprised. I'd be a bit disappointed. I'd be like super like disappointed, yeah. But, but the, the Warriors just swept everybody else. Everybody else. Let's go to 53. Yeah, we don't talk enough sports ball on our, on our live shows here. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're streaming live on ESPN right now. You probably give better analysis than those guys do. Well, they want to talk about who's better, LeBron or Jordan. Yeah. Which is not really a, it's a silly argument because you can't really prove either way. So. Yeah. Next up, 54. These are some, some eagle eyes. Yeah, like, I don't know. I, I, I Obviously, like, we're, we're old as dirt, so we've seen, like, MJ play. And I remember at the time I thought that, like, he came from a completely different league and there's some, like, different time travel dimension Yes. Thing it just came from a completely different league. That's how much better he was than everybody. And being a Cavs fan back then, yeah, being a Cavs fan back then was no fun. I you didn't like him. You're, I respected him, but I didn't like him. Next up, uh, fifty five. And I was just thinking about that the other day because of like Chicago. Like, how many times did LeBron put the knife in Chicago from being a, a Cavalier or being like from the Miami Heat? Yeah. I mean, he just like straight up knifed that team. And it's it was like such. You can replace, payback. and you can re, you can replace Chicago with the Eastern Conference. Yeah, <laughs> just knife them all. So uh, I, I saw this weird stat like um, that the last time uh, there was a finals that didn't have LeBron James in it, like uh, like Instagram didn't exist, John Wall hadn't been drafted yet, <laughs> like all the because it's been like seven, like eight years or something now. So yeah, it was it was a different world back then. Yes, it was. Okay, uh, let's go to 56. These are uh, another set of eagle eyes here. Bay Area Reefs. <laughs> you know, people have sent me shirts before that I did wear. Not, I'm not going to wear a Warrior shirt, though. Next up, 57. These are some Sakura Zoas. I don't know why I, I like these. I can't really explain it, but I've always kind of been... I was kind of just kind of into their look because they got like a whole bunch of things going on, but they don't have like ridiculous color, so they never really stand out. But they got like speckles. Yeah, and, the speckles are cool. Yeah. Infamous Aquatics. LeBron is not getting swept. Warriors will, will not be swept. I, yeah, I can't imagine the Warriors gonna get swept. What are your thoughts about black sponges? I typically don't have a lot of thoughts on black sponges. Um, what I've noticed is that sponges that you want to keep around, that you like the look of, that are decorative, 
tend to die when you look at them. And the sponges that are um, invasive and overgrowing your corals and stuff like that, they tend to uh, just grow out of control. Do you have enough, uh, enough cord, Ben? Yeah, I just might want to get an additional uh, extension cord. So in the in the meantime, we'll look at Nathan's tank. Yeah, I recognize that guy. <clears throat> what do you have? What are your thoughts about black sponges? Yeah, yeah they're so, cool. Yeah, I mean, like you know how they say that when you that you shouldn't take sponges out of the water because uh, like, like they'll trap oxygen, whatever. I've put I've put sponges that I wanted to kill under the faucet, like fresh water and put them back in my tank, they were fine. Like, like seriously, if, if, uh, if you have stuff that you want to keep alive, great. Um, it's probably gonna die. Like, like I, I have the bright yellow sponges, I can't keep those alive. As soon as you like expose them to like yeah. light, they, they die. You put them anywhere that you want, can see them and then they, they, they go away. Uh, do you ship globally? No, sorry. Um, only in the US, except for Hawaii. What fish cleaner crew is best to eat Aptasia? Easily, um, it's it's gonna be uh, oh, what you call it? Copper band. Copper band. Yeah. Okay. So what number are we the, on uh, here? The, uh, the fi that one type of file fish too works real well. Yeah, the the ugly one, like the yeah. the tass. Is it a tat and tassel? Well, it it's also like known a, as aptasia eating file fish. Yeah, it's like a gray leaf. Yeah. And, it, and but I hear that those kind of bother zoanthids and stuff like that, or they can. I don't know. Let's get a 59. Use some Jack Frost Pallies. What fish are in his tank? Orange Spot Bile Fish, Achilles Tang, Yellow Tang, Yellow Eye Coal Tang. I've got three Square Spot Antheus. Got a couple various Dragonettes. Let's go to 60. Mm -hmm. Did I you go to your tank? I got a large. Leopard, uh, leopard grass. That's in the. That's all in the display tank. And then I have a blonde naso tank in the the frag tank. Along that's with, in the frag tank. Yeah. Kind of big for for that tank. Isn't he it? will be going over, but he was a bubble eater, al algae eater, proven. So I put yeah. him in there to help with that. Yeah, like certain tanks are really good at eating bubble algae, and certain tanks do nothing. Like we've got a tank that has a yellow tang in it. Does nothing for bubble algae, but will kill fox faces that I put in there. Um, but uh, I, I think that like nasos are pretty good at that. Last comment. Matted filefish is the one that eats it. Matted filefish. All right, let's go to sixty-one. This is a, it's going to be a green torch. Actually, does this look familiar? It does, and it looks awesome. Yeah, especially with that macro lens? Is there like a macro lens mm -hmm. on there? Yeah, we're using a macro lens. Dang. So it's like I shoot with Canon, he shoots with Nikon, right? You have a Nikon? Nikon? Yes, but not nearly as fancy toys to go along with it as your, <laughs> your Canon. You have a fancy tank though, so yeah, it makes up for it. Next up, 62. Sky Blue Hammer. So we've been on the, um, on the, the, the mega water change train and it's it's so silly that when things are going wrong in my tank when something's not happy and i'm like trying to tr figure it out and tweak little things turn the skimmer up or down i'm like the easiest thing to do is just several large water changes increase the frequency and the volume and then it fixes everything yes and and anybody in the, anybody in the hobby can learn from that just yeah this do water like, changes yay no more zoas well, there might be some more later, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're done with them for a good while here. Let's go to a 63. This is a purple tip frog spawn. Recently, some of my LPS have become angry. Mostly my Duncans have Do not Do a water opened. change. I'm sorry. Do a water change. <laughs> I tested and all the levels are on par, but mag is 1450. Light and flow are good too. Any, you know, again, it's like so, some of the stuff just does not show up on a test kit. Like, we tried something new that I'll talk about much later, but I basically, like, angered everything in my tank. And if you look at every single thing that we did individually, it shouldn't have done anything. But the combination of all these things equals mass die-off and, and angry corals. And what fixed that? 
mega water changes. So, yeah, when in doubt, do water changes. Next up, 64. It's the second purple tip. So, the little guy right behind him. Do you have any suggestions for getting copper bands to accept prepared foods? Um, not really. They kind of get hungry on their own and they'll eventually start taking mysis. But really the best bet is to have tons of live rock, like tons of live rock. So maybe one or two hundred pounds per fish would be pretty, would be a good start. Uh, next up, 65. Because we keep copper bands in both types of systems, either like a, a basically a giant 300 gallon tub with tons of live rock or one of these like very sparsely populated uh, grow out tanks. And the ones in the grow out tanks are really thin and are always like super hungry. So we have to bring Aptasia to them and also you know feed those tanks extra. The ones in the tubs, um, they're always fat. So the biggest thing I can say is just get tons of live rock. Um, you see, so you have a copper band Correct. that's super fat. So how much live rock do you have in your tank? Would you guess? I don't even know if I could guess. Uh, at least it looks like a couple hundred at least. I was probably yeah. 150, but it eats mice. Mine eats mice. Yeah, and it'll eat um, like the meatier chunks from like Rod's food. Stuff. Yeah. Next up, let's go to 66. So even, even with them eating prepared foods, because all of ours will eat mysis and krill, the ones without as much live rock get thin. So do that. Yeah, it, my, mine is always hunting and sniping things off the rocks too. Okay. Next up, 67. <clears throat> Uh, Rhett Herring, uh, okay, so, okay, so somebody was asking, um, Mist, Mist TT, best things to avoid for someone new in the hobby. I will make it very succinct. Avoid advice from people who you have not seen their tank. Because there's a lot of information that you have access to now, like way more than when I started. Let's go to, uh, 68. These are Amber C fans. Um, so, and... Tons and, of information available. Yeah, and Facebook groups aren't always that effective to get good right. information from. And not not because the, necessarily that, that they in themselves are bad. It's just that it's really easy to get very loud opinions. And it's backed up with nothing if you don't see their tank. I don't care if they're like a professor of coral biology at wherever. It doesn't matter. You have to see their tank. Um, People like to regurgitate. Anecdotal, 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 anecdotal yeah. evidence that they have they've never seen or have proof of, and then it's just you don't really know if it works or not. And uh, let's go to number sixty nine and being able to implement whatever philosophy, like reef keeping philosophy that you have, being able to actually implement it and have it work um, is a big deal. And so e even when um, you you see somebody's um, unbelievable looking tank. You have to understand that if you did everything that they did, you might not get their results. And that's kind of like a, an important distinction too. Like you, you need to be able to talk to somebody that, that can talk you through some of the subtleties and things like that. And so oftentimes if people are just regurgitating like stuff that they've read on social media or whatever, and you never actually see like the proof of work, there is this gap of knowledge that just simply you just can't do without. Like, because there, there are these little nuances to make stuff work. Okay, let's go to 70. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on, on things like Triton or Zeovit? Have not tried Triton. Technically have not tried Zeovit, but every single time we've tried ultra low nutrient, it has not worked out for us. Have you tried anything like that? Um, bio pellets to drive down nutrients, but like I said, I don't like to go below those levels from earlier. Yeah. Below anything below five parts per million nutrient or nitrates and point one. Let's go to seventy one. Point one four or point one two phosphates just don't work out for my tank. So s similarly, when when I tried uh, ultra low nutrient, I never even got to low nutrient <laughs> before stuff started to die, like. 
Yeah, yeah. Like my uh, my phosphates. Like oh, oh you you know, it's like you, you took your phosphates down too low. My phosphates were like at 0. 0.5. Clearly not too low. Not 0. 0.05, 0. 0.5. And stuff started to go downhill. So, uh, but then uh, like another one of my customers will. His tank is like super ultra low nutrient. He's using you know aquaforest and everything. His tank looks incredible. And whatever he does does not work for me. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things like your mileage may vary, and when you kind of like model your methodology after other folks, you can kind of start to pick up on on what works and what doesn't. But you have to kind of start from that knowledge of what their tank looks like, because there's some there's some systems out there that you never want to try to implement. Like oh, so you do it that way? That's great. Glad it worked out for yeah. you. All right. What par do you keep your Zoas at? Somewhere between 100 to 200. Would you consider keeping a carpet and enemies reef safe? Um, I wouldn't. Uh, things find their way into carpet and enemies pretty readily. Like fish that do jobs for me will end up getting eaten by that. So not too into it. So uh, going back to the whole uh, Triton thing, though, uh, Rhett. I am interested just in getting my water tested by um, by something better than a hobbyist level test kit. That'd be nice. Would you dose two part in a forty gallon all in one? Could work. As Depending long on demand. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You could you dial it in. To yeah. Demand, which means testing. Yeah. Dosing, testing, dosing, a testing. A lot of lot of testing. Like uh, we lost a, like a bunch of stony corals, and so it's like, yeah, you know what? All our numbers are coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we, 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 we had low alkalinity. Turns out, yeah, it was those pesky corals getting in, getting in the way, messing up my chemistry. Tests. Using it, yeah. So what are they thinking? They're not thinking anything anything anymore. Our candelabra non photosynthetic. No, actually, all the all the um, what do you call it? Gorgonians that we just showed you—they're all photosynthetic. They're all Caribbean. Mm -mm -mm. Any suggestions to raise phosphate? You can't get mine to stay above 0 0.05, and I have no bio pellets or carbon. Put some food. nori in there. Yeah, just put in food. You got tangs, nori, you'll do the trick pretty quick. Okay, so this guy's 74, I believe. Yep. So I'm like kind of like trying to look over and see what uh, what lighting we're using on that because it's looking very purple. I bet those are purple plus bulbs. That's why. That that's that's the big difference. Pretty cool though. We still I think need to update our website because I think the, these things are still listed as Acanthastria on our website. They've been since changed or some change over Micromusa. Uh, next up seventy five. Actually Ben, if you just want to like just go through them and just just announce what number you're on, that'll work. <clears throat> yeah, you can you can just feed a lot more to get the phosphates up, I guess. I mean, at the same time, if you're not really seeing um, you know bad results from your coral, you probably don't need to worry about it that much. Um, I, I I guess I've never been in a situation where uh, I my phosphates were so low that I had to worry about it. My my, my phosphates are always super high. Um, in our, in our latest phosphate video, somebody had mentioned that like. Um, that Sanjay Joshi, uh, he has a really nice SPS tank in Pennsylvania, and his nitrates are like point, or I'm sorry, his phosphates are like at point four. So again, you you can certainly have a tank with high um, phosphates and nitrate levels that don't express things like algae blooms or anything like that. A lot of it is just going to depend on a whole bunch of other factors that 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 you're kind of um, controlling or not controlling in many cases. Uh, Sunny Brooks, you're saying I don't want low to zero phosphate. Again, you, you, you kind of have to, to play it by ear on, or play it by sight as to what you're seeing in your tank. Um, certain tanks, as soon as you start to elevate phosphate, stuff looks bad. In my situation, everything seems to look pretty good even with elevated phosphate. 
<clears throat> my zero phosphate situation is a direct contributor to my dino outbreak. Hmm. I, I think I I've know. read that because then there's nothing to uptake nitrate except for dinos. It's, oh, it's weird. that's interesting. Yeah. I can see that. Because it's the bacteria balance. It's not the nutrient balance for bacteria is not there because bacteria needs both phosphate and nitrate. And okay. So when the phosphate's not there, then nitrate's left over and dinos sometimes take over. I've been reading that as a. Some anecdotal information. Yep. I heard on the internet. Yeah. I'm Facebook. I'm MySpace. What T5 bulbs you, would you recommend for growth? Pretty much they will all work. If you wanted to get the most broad spectrum, you're going to be uh, in the land of stuff that look, that's going to look more yellow, something more towards a 10K area. So uh, like an ATI Aqua Blue Special would be like the most blue, uh, most like whitish, yellowish bulb. Um, that would probably do the best overall, but you might be introducing a little bit more... Uh, of the spectrum that would do well for algae as well. Um, I happen to like Blue Plus a lot. That's probably my favorite bulb. Okay. Let's go to 80. 80. <clears throat> yeah, that, that is interesting. Like, because if you completely deplete one, one thing that would stop algae growth, you might promote the growth of something else to, to make up the balance. Mm hmm yeah. Interesting. Do you recommend the Orbit Marine Pro LEDs? Uh, never used them. Never seen. Actually, never even seen a tank with them on. With what LEDs? Os uh, Orbit Marine Pro LEDs. Okay, so Vincent Taylor's saying, what level would you recommend keeping phosphates at? I'll let you handle this one. Uh, it depends on where you're at now and how your corals look and if you have any issues. If, if everything looks good in your tank, keep, them, keep it there. If they're paled out, your corals, that you probably need a little bit higher phosphate. That's a dope looking micro. That's I like nice. that one a lot. Next up, 82. These are cheap. That was like thirty-five dollars, man. <laughs> it's like looking at it, like, nah, that was underpriced. <laughs> Quick edit. Yeah, it's like. Do you uh, have a dump button where you can dump the feed <laughs> for? It's like it streams down, boys. Yeah. Need to change some pricing. Okay, let's go on to eighty-three. catching up on, on on the chats I wish our micros in general would do better here I would love to have like a, a long-term sustainable culture of these things we need to do many things differently I'm guessing yay some leathers so um, I have a story about some leather corals that we've got um, they had shrunken in and oftentimes they shrink in for like a period of time and oops let me do this here let's do this slightly there we go um <clears throat> they no you're good you're good so they they, sh they shrink up and then they get like a waxy coat and eventually they re-extend and uh they shed off that whatever uh coating that they've kind of um grown there to like just get the algae and everything off of them but the algae was so aggressively growing that uh the thing was basically held down and it got to the point where coralline started to grow over it <laughs> so i'm like that's not good that's that's really really not good uh so i went actually had to go in there and scrape coralline off of my leathers and only now are they slightly starting to to regain some traction. That's it's pretty crazy. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, you can actually almost see it there. So like uh, on the tips and stuff like that, you can just see a little bit of that uh, that growth is still still there. I'm gonna check something real quick here. Great. Good number of people. So just as a little uh, experiment for YouTube's sake, I'm curious if it, if it makes any difference if we get more thumbs up or down. If you, if you don't like the stream, give it a thumbs down. But either way, everybody that's in chat, please vote either up or down. Thumbs down! <laughs> so if you see the thumbs down count go up, it's, it's, it's Nathan here. Switch Google account, thumbs down. <laughs> What, uh, what salt are you using right now? Are you using uh, Instant Ocean? or I'm using Reef Crystals. Reef crystals. I always have used Reef Crystals. Yeah. It's a safe bet. What was weird was that like somebody was uh, telling me that they had, test they, they, they had switched from Reef Crystals to something else because the values that they were testing at were getting all over the place, which is like really strange because... Um, quantities of Reef Crystals are made. Yeah, but I know uh, one of the guys that... that works for uh, UPG, United Pet Group, that ma that owns Instant Ocean and Reef Crystals and whatnot. And he was talking me through, like, their system of making salt is, like, the most advanced in the world. You know, and how it's, like, a, a dry room within another dry room to, like, completely control everything. So it's, like, the absolute state of the art because their ultimate focus was consistency between batches. So it was really strange to hear that, like, somebody had inconsistent batches. I was like, huh. Yeah. You hear that at from time to time about every make of, or every brand of salt. Yeah. Somebody will claim that it's a bad batch. I just hope whoever makes that claim has tested it with multiple test kits, you know? Yeah. Or, or, or something better than a test kit. Yeah. Like, you're actually sending, out, sending it out to a lab. I've read that about aquaforest weird levels. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if it's just like when you start to scale up production of salt, it's just, you're on your own, buddy. It's, you, it, is, it is the wild west as far as what's chemically going to happen with these crystals and stuff. And I can't keep Ectasia in a bucket. It's probably the best place to keep it. <laughs> yeah, and you probably could. I've, I've kept uh, Mojanos in a little cup on my desk. They're fine. Those are kind of cool. Like looking at my invent inventory here. I bought quite a few chalice from me a while back and noticed that they've lost quite a bit of coloration, especially green. I struggle with nutrient levels, but I'm working hard to keep them up. Uh, would too high par cause this? Uh, yeah, that could do a lot. Yeah, especially levels around 300. Yeah, 300 is, um, you're getting into like Acropora only, like Acropora and Montipora only type stuff. A lot of things wouldn't like it that bright. If getting instant consist inconsistent levels out of salt, always roll and mix the bucket. I think the problem is the entire bucket and every, every other bucket on that entire skid is a problem. Like, it's an entire batch. And see, the thing is, like, I or order... For aquaforest? Or, or for any salt. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I think that, I mean, we buy salt by the skid, and occasionally you see weird stuff. Like, I saw a propeller blade in one of my salt buckets. <laughs> like a giant piece of, like, broken metal or something. <laughs> Are we on 92? Okay. Yeah, so I've seen weird stuff show up in, in, in buckets before. And again, it's like, I, I, I think I've been saying it for a long time now, but don't slavishly go after specific numbers in the hobby. It's much more important for your corals to look healthy and kind of like let them decide what it is that you do next. Because if your stuff is looking great and you take some tests and it's like, man, all of my stuff is like off by this much, I'm going to start doing a bunch of things. You might want to pump your brakes on that. Like it could go badly. It could have been a bad test kit. You know, there, there's a lot of things that could have yeah, gone wrong. Yeah, if you're doing tests and all of a sudden one's way off, out of nowhere, retest it or confirm it with a 
Yeah, somebody else's another, test kit. Yeah. D another brand, even. Yeah. First retest it, maybe you made an error you didn't realize, and then mm -hmm. it's still way off. You might want to test and use another test kit before you start making major changes. Yeah. In fact, major changes in general aren't a great idea. <laughs> That's true. I've, I've kind of, I've kind of uh, I have to relearn that, that, that noob lesson. All right, next up, let's go to 94. With Red Sea, you can also request the QC form from the salt batch. There you go. See, Red Sea, that's another one that, that kind of strikes me as begging for volatility. Because I guess they, they desiccate water from like from the Red Sea. Yeah, right? Yeah, so that's, you're just, I mean, from week to week that could change. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've never messed with it. Luke, Schnabel, hey, what's up, everyone? See, he gets a wrench because he's a moderator. <laughs> Long time no see, Luke. Is that so he can beat people over the head and ban them with it? Yeah, the he, wrench? He, he's got the ban hammer, the ban, the ban wrench. All right, let's go to 96. We're finally into our SPS. Thankfully, they're still alive for the most part. Uh, if an item sells, will it still appear in the search for its number? No, it should it should vanish unless there's like ten of that item, um, which will only be for two specifically. So no, it, it, they will they will they will vanish. So if you go to titlegardens.com, look at the live sale uh, link. It's a little blinking red dot. You'll see that the numbers are probably not in order unless we've had like the worst live sale ever, <laughs> where nothing has sold in the first hundred. That I would, won't be invited back. Or, uh, yeah. it's like, something, something, something's just, gone wrong. Yeah, it's got to be Nathan. Ninety-seven. Yeah. yeah, something's gone terribly wrong. If if all of those numbers are in order, like oh boy. Our sports talk just drove everybody away. Yeah, they're away. like sports ball. It's like, <laughs> sports. it's like the reason why we're watching this is because we don't watch yes. sports. Next up, ninety-eight. It's like sport. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go play Xbox now. <laughs> I got a PlayStation 4 for my birthday. Very nice. It's got some good games. Anyways. I don't know how you manage to find time to play. That's it's, like... I don't watch TV at night. After the kids go to bed, I play for about an hour, and then I go to bed. I, I can barely keep up with my Clash of Clans base. Seriously. I, I haven't touched that forever. <laughs> I don't know. Am I, am I kicked out of the clan? Probably. I got kicked out of the clan. Oh. <laughs> for an activity? No, I think I got kicked out because I was attacking bases too high above me. So, so get oh, this. Oh, they didn't like hiding. So we, we uh, haven't, hadn't done like a uh, clan war in like months. In months. Okay. And so we finally do one. And I ended up doing like an attack that was like too high or something and then I got instantly booted like you guys aren't that serious about wars you were just wars. looking for an excuse I know it you were just so looking. anyway it's not that important it's a stupid phone game yeah it only took me like a year and a half to realize that <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm still it's playing, playing it. it but this is dumb Luke I just got home so I wanted to stop in and say hi I gotta get a shower he's running around Cool. Yeah. This chat's not going to moderate itself. Yeah. Yeah, Luke. Get to work. So Luke is building his dad's house. Next up, number 100. We're on 100, right? Good. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. He, he, he's going to get... Okay, so Ben's giving me a reminder. At, at, at 50 interval things, okay? Thank you all for having purchased some corals. Uh, because FedEx is closed for the Memorial Day holiday on Monday, uh, the, the packages are going to start shipping on Tuesday for delivery Wednesday. Okay, let's go to 101. Uh, PS4, add Charles of Chi Town. We can have some real reef talk. There you go. I'm such a noob with play. I don't even know how to add somebody. I'm going to have to he look doesn't, at that. So, I don't even know what my username is. Sir Charles, we're what's called old. Yeah. Like, we grew up with like the NES. Yeah, they weren't connected to the interwebs back yeah. when. Like, I, I, I like was great at Zelda 2. I did beat Zelda 
Breath of the Wild. That was a good game. And it, I need I, I like to get games that the kids like to watch and that are suitable for the kids to watch because that's what they want to do at night. It's like, Daddy, will you play the video game? Like, so no Witcher? Hey. They don't... No, I don't let them watch that. <laughs> no. I, and then even with Horizon Zero Dawn, which is what I've been playing, you got to be careful which missions you're doing. Yeah, I'd rather go take out robot dinosaurs versus humans and sneaking up and slashing them. Although the kids have seen me do it a few times. But. <laughs> so uh, uh, Nathan here also has like a virtual reality headset. He's got the... Um, HTC Vive. HTC, yeah. So I tried it for the first time. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. I mean, I played it for like literally two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and you got I'm out like, of it. I'm like, my head is burning up because it's just like it's the whole headset. It's like, it's like the ears and everything. I'm like, it's like a hundred degrees in this thing. It is. It does get warm. So I was like, okay, t- I'm tapping out. But it was it was really cool. I mean, it was definitely very obviously very immersive. There's game. There's games where you're you're moving around, picking things up, throwing them. Sh- turning and then you, you actually start sweating i'll have to get down to a t-shirt and gym shorts <laughs> and you know you get a you just sweat it out oh, what we do on the my VRs. wife's like are you going to the gym no no i'm gonna play some virtual reality and she'll just i know I, I know she'll do it she'll just stand at the top of the stairs and look down in the room as i'm just playing like shake her head just like, like what have i done yes i had, I, I, I I had children with that i, I could have done better clearly yeah. look at this yeah. She's probably just like, you know. Just, and meanwhile, I'm like <laughs> slashing swords around. <laughs> oh, boy. I was kind of weir- weird out because, like, so Ben is, like, inter- interested in um, in getting a VR headset. But I was like, it's kind of buggy. The, for whatever reason, getting it up and running sometimes is. Once you do, though, I, there's game. A lot of the games are very smooth and very fun and interactive. But for some reason, I it it has trouble launching on my system, and I it I don't know why. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. But mm, why do you ship FedEx and not UPS or USPS? Never ship USPS. So I heard that you should never ship USPS. Anecdotal, but I have heard that. I've had it happen. Somebody we've, shipped it to me. We've shipped UPS before, um, and there wasn't anything wrong with that part of the service. It was just through this other company, and they uh, overcharged me by four grand and didn't realize it until I brought it up. And they're like, sorry. I'm like, okay, you're gone. <laughs> and so that's when we switched back to FedEx. That's why. Shipping is an insane story. Like, people like to complain about how much, uh, how much shipping costs when you know, we're ordering corals overnighted and stuff. It's like, shipping is so expensive. Do you, realize what do you realize what they're doing? It's, <laughs> it's like it's going from Cleveland to, to like, California and tonight. Why you sleep? <laughs> yeah, tonight. And oh, by the way, like we're getting a mega discount to offer thirty nine ninety nine, and we're still taking a loss on shipping. Like if you actually saw my invoices and how much something costs, or better yet, you don't even need to see my invoices. You just need to go to FedEx.com. Punch in your address, my address, and next day air for about like three pounds of anything. And you'll see real fast how fast that number goes into the three digits. It's like, it's so expensive to, to ship anything. And so that's another thing. You can't do multiple um, providers. So if you're a FedEx shipping place, you ship FedEx. You don't ship FedEx, UPS, and another service and, and, and let the, the, the buyers choose because you need to, to develop the, um, like the volume to get those discounts. So if, you, if, I, if I split up my shipping amongst like three different ones, uh, I'd basically be paying like what, $100 a box to ship. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So no, you have to put it all into one basket and then you get like a discount. So you're only losing a little bit of money on shipping. Yes. So there's that. And then when people ask you about overseas shipping, it's like, yeah, just you know, add a one to whatever number. <laughs> Put a zero at the end. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yeah. So, Chris, what lens is that? It is a Canon 100mm f2.8 L image stabilized. Is this 108 or 109? This is 109. Okay. What's my mom's favorite coral? Like all of them. 
the she, ones that I like because she, she won't sell them to me. <laughs> she's she, like she'll. Yeah, she doesn't want to sell any corals. Yeah, I'm like, this one's awesome. What is it? And then she'll come. No, 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 no. Not for sale. No. Dan, no. <clears throat> Have you explained it at Frag Swaps Ooh, that your that. mom's the one that does the shopping? You, I don't even know if you even look at other people's tanks. Your mom's the one going around. Oh, I don't go to them. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. It's like I've never That's had true. a frag swap. That's true. The past swap. few, it's, it's your mom's there, and I don't. You're not. Yeah, I, I never go to frag swaps now. Is that Fabio? It, it is. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Especially once you you hit it with the light. There it is. Yeah. It's it's all like shadow. That's why it's hard to see. Want water? Uh, I've got a nice tea right now, but. Let's see. One twelve. Yeah, these guys will get a lot more bright too. The, the springtime has them like lower colored, but even then, like when you put it under actinic, you can see the see the brightness. Who's messaging me? Oh, it's a Luke. Sent me like a billion images. It's some ginormous house. Is it? What is that? Is it a greenhouse? I think it's like a house house. Uh, I'll, I'll have to Arches? talk to you about that later. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, kind of like an earth ship, so it'll get, it'll, get, it'll get buried. A hobbit house. Kind of, except probably 10,000 square feet. Well, a nice hobbit <laughs> like, house. Like, a nice bag end. <laughs> I'm so disappointed by the hobbit movies. What's your favorite coral? I don't have one. What's yours? It varies. Uh, I'm into chalices right now because they don't grow as fast, so they don't become a nuisance in terms of trying to maintain and cut them and trim them. Is that 114, Ben? Okay. Anything really nice and shiny, though. I think I let... I there's some chalices that are actually kind of neat now. I, I was really bored with, bored with chalices for like a long time there when they were like really hot. But now that they're kind of going out of fashion and we're getting into like weird mushrooms and stuff like that, now I'm appreciating chalices more. It's like I'm like getting all hipster about it. <laughs> Which is like the worst perspective to take when it comes to hobbies. Yeah. Look at that sparkle. Yeah. These guys have done really well. Does Ben have headphones on over there? No. For the feed? He just hears us? No. We, we were thinking about doing something, but we haven't. I didn't know if he could hear your audio. Oh, no, definitely not. And also, there's like a 30 second delay between. Oh, that's so true. It would be, be like weird. super weird. <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, let's see that one again. Back and forth, back and forth. So is chat still working? I haven't heard a new comment come through in like a long time. Question mark? There we go. Than, I'm the one from last show that had 40 nitrate. Used Red Sea no, po no POX and dropped it down to 20. Coral still look good. Should I try to get it as close to zero as possible? Not if corals are happy. If corals are happy. You might want to leave that well enough alone. Like, so th there's there have been times where I would tr I would try something, and I've intentionally used like a very low dosage, like a half or a quarter of what what's recommended for my for my volume. And I'm not even expecting anything to happen. Like, oh, it's supposed to like help color up the corals just a little bit. Um, uh, and so I'm like, well, if it happens to help a touch, that'll be an interesting experiment. I'll I'll play from there. But um, what could happen is everything dies. Like th that's what's crazy about it. You're, a lot of times it can go from really okay to pretty good to completely dead and not a whole lot of uh, leeway. Is Red Sea Nopox like a, a something you dose or is it a type of biocolor? 
That's a good Not question. Familiar. For some I've reason, I think s- it's a liquid. Okay, I've seen some bio pellets that are like no pellets too. I just wasn't yeah. Familiar. I don't know. I, I haven't used that product before. But just for reference, I if I don't do any uh, extra measures if my nitrates are below 20. Once they reach above 20, that's when I'll do do some extra water changes or try and control them a little bit. But uh, once I get them 20 or below, I just kind of let them naturally go. Settle out. Yeah. Roscoe's Reefless Scott. What's up, everyone? Finally a live sale. I was not working. Yeah, we were actually planning on doing this last week, but everything was so angry here. I was like, no, we're going to wait. <laughs> we're going to push it off seven days. What did you guys go to college for? I went... Okay, so... This is 119? Okay. Um, so I went to school for... I did an undergraduate in biology. Almost did one in computer science. Um, then I went and did, did my MBA, and then I got my law degree. So JD. And how much of it do I use for this business? I would say zero. I'm not thinking of college for some reason. I enjoyed it. I think it helps. It, you may, it helps you form a, a way of thinking or multiple ways of thinking. Oh, I gosh. thought like some different classes require different patterns of thought. And so you might not like the class, but I think it broadens your ability to think in different perspectives. But I went for business finance and I use that every day because I work in finance. So so my uh, so I went to Ohio State and I use what I learn there every day. Where'd you go? I went to Michigan. And you don't use that, what you learn no. there. No. But all, 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 I'm just of, saying. all of my housemates from back in college though, <laughs> they're all like millionaires or billionaires. So uh, it was just me that did it wrong. No, none of uh, my roommates are. I, I sell coral. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like, so one, um, well, they're all freaking public figures, so I could probably just say their names. One, her name is Rochelle Mead, and she's like a New York Times bestselling author, and she actually had like movies made of her books and stuff. 14 time, or like maybe even 16 time, I don't, I don't keep track. Because that's still. Because I, I hate it. Because <laughs> I'm jealous of so, me. <laughs> so Rochelle, good job, um, Rochelle. She's, she, she became very successful. Another one of my uh, friends, one of my best friends, He's a uh, you know, world-famous eye surgeon now. He's doing awfully well. Another one of my guys uh, went to uh, into engineering. He's doing well. Another guy uh, started a software company, um, and he's probably a billionaire right now. He started a, a company called Twilio, and I think their their uh, their market cap fluctuates from between two to four billion dollars. So I don't know if so he's a billionaire. Depending on how many shares he has. Yeah, and he was one of the first three founders. So he's probably doing okay. Yeah. But you know, like you know, that the VCs take their cut after like what three rounds of. Your mom's been here the whole time. Yeah. Oh, she's been hiding. <laughs> so yeah, so he's probably doing all right. Um, what's anybody else do? Another guy started a software company, and I think that he's doing all right too. Because I think that his his particular uh, business to business application has a hundred thousand clients. <laughs> that probably scales okay in the B two B world. Yeah, do they know anything about nitrates and phosphates though. He might. Yeah. Like so, so the one guy that's not the billionaire, um, he was taking a video game programming class, and he made this uh, sailboat game that he went and read like nautical books. This was like back before Google, because the guy from Google was at Michigan with me when we were there. So just you know throwing that out there for the for you OSU grads out here, you know, aspire one day to be Michigan grads. There's tons of Ohio State girls. I'm sure somebody did something. I just don't keep track. Did they invent Google? No, no. No. But I own shares of Google, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Good. You're, 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 you're I'm an owner. A, I own Google. <laughs> <You're> an <owner. laughs> it's like I went to OSU and I own Google. <laughs> I didn't find, found it, but I, I I own it. Yeah. I mean, like, the, so he started Google like in Stanford, which is like crazy to think about that. Like at the same age, same place, same situation. You know, I sell coral while he probably is trying to work on artificial intelligence to take over the planet. It's completely different levels of you know, yeah. what you did after, after school. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. 
Sir Charles, money doesn't equal happiness. That is absolutely true. True. Very true. But if you're going to go to college and spend a whole bunch of money, paying, being able to pay that off is also a consideration that you should take into account for, especially now that college is, ex is, is the most expensive it's ever been in human history. So, so when you get to send your kids to college... I'm, I'm in finance and I'm planning for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a lot, of, a lot more cool toys right now if I wasn't, though. Yeah, enjoy, uh, enjoy that million dollar price tag per kid. Mm. <clears throat> so when are you guys going to come buy some more coral? Because that's, that's my kid's college fund. I will, I will. <laughs> I, I'll help you. I'll put, I'll put in some, some nickels towards that. <laughs> Thank goodness I have cats. They don't go to college. Vet bills can suck, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. My dog had it. Did I tell you? Penny... She had ACL surgery. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Not cheap. She ripped it. How, how do you... Why? So dogs' ACLs don't get repaired like humans either. They, they kind of like just shred. They don't snap. So what they did is they cut the lower bone in her leg, put an insert in there, and then... It basically realigned the knee so that you'd no longer need a tendon to keep it stable, and that's how they fixed it. Doesn't sound cheap though, does it? Because it's no. not. It's not. <laughs> it. i She went from not being able to walk on it to actually walking on it the next day. Crazy. And then she she's doing real good. Now she's limping on the other leg. That was not. She hasn't totally ripped it though. So wait, uh, how, how did your dog rip her ACL in the first place? It's not uncommon. She's a chocolate lab, and either from running around and playing, or I think she may have been partially torn anyway. She wasn't limping though. I think she just hopped into the house up the stair one day and yeah. We're all getting old. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about, so there's this amusement park uh, that's local to us called Cedar Point. It is like the best roller coasters on the planet. <laughs> like, no joke. Speaking of be getting old. Speaking of getting old. And those rides messed me up to the, the point. The same rides that you could, used to be able to ride over and over times. and over again. Yeah, Now you day. need an hour and a half in between rides or you're going to end up throwing up. Yeah. And, the, and even though that hour and a half is not very fun. No. It, it is a recovery time, and it's like my head never stopped hurting after the first ride. It scrambles you big time. Ugh. I, but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I, I love it so much, but man, I, I only got on seven rides, and it was like, I have a concussion. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, what, other than corals, what pets do you have? I have two cats. And if I had, a, if I could pick any other pet to have, I would want a pet pig, and I wouldn't care how big it got. If it happened to be a, a thousand-pound pig, that is perfectly acceptable. Yeah, you got the resources and facilities here. <laughs> yeah, I have a thousand. I could have a thousand-pound pig. I have two dogs and two kids. Those are my pets. I was, I was about to say like, and a wife, but oh, just get into too much trouble. You'll never be back here again. Yes. You'd be buried in the backyard. The, the Millennium Force, I actually black out on the Millennium Force. <laughs> Down the first hill, around the, the sharp turn, uh, the pin, the my eyes just kind of start to go black, my vision, and then it's little pinholes right before. I don't pass out, but I black out. It's kind of cool. So, uh, Jackie, who's Michael's girlfriend, Michael has helped out on these live shows before, if you guys remember. But uh, his, his, I went with him and his girlfriend to Cedar Point, and his girlfriend on a couple of different occasions said, yeah, I kind of blacked out a little bit on that ride. Yep, I've talked to a couple people. Who... And so uh, Sean, my personal trainer, who's, who's three years older than me, um, he hasn't been there in like years. Like he, he doesn't even know what the Millennium Force is. He doesn't like know what Mavericks is. And so I'm like, yeah, if you are not familiar with what these rides are like, and you haven't gone in 10 years, a lot has changed. You're pulling some G's on these rides. Yeah, a <laughs> lot has changed. And you know what? It's not even so much the ride. It's like your body is different now. Your brain does not like being sent down these things really fast and 
and shaken. And so, so he's like, you know, super big, tough guy, like 260 pound personal trainer dude. He's like, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I'm gonna tough it out. I'm gonna have like, you know, an adult beverage my, uh, during that time. And I'm like, when yeah. the darkness comes, just remember to mm-hmm. tense your legs to get the blood back into your, into yep. your head. Yep. Instead of yep. grunting through the turns like, like you're a, in a fighter jet, yep. it'll come in handy. Otherwise, you're gonna be put to sleep on this ride. <laughs> your daughter's gonna have to carry you out. This is 133? Okay. <clears throat> have you seen Hogzilla? I think I have. I think that's like some, some big, big wild pig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I, I like I like pigs because I like how smart they are. I like um, I don't think, I don't think I like how noisy they are. Yeah, and have you ever cleaned up after one? I have not, but I can't. Well, imagine. I heard they're super clean animals, and you can you can toilet train them and stuff. Not like on your on your seat. Kitty or like a kitty litter type thing. But you, yeah, they'll totally learn to use a litter box. But if it's a thousand pound pig, what kind of litter box? Are you yeah, well, yeah, about? that thing's not gonna be in your house. <laughs> no. Do you use a refugium in your personal system? I do, yes. I kind of don't, but I mean, there's varying degrees. Did he just vape? He just vaped. <laughs> is this, is like, Consequently, we just vaped too. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is this mist? <laughs> what just happened here? We're going to some special effects for the show. What does it smell like leather in here? Certain crystals in your inner ear can't handle amusement rides like they did when you were a kid. Yeah, I noticed that. Crystals? Is there like a supplement we can take for that? Alcohol. I don't know. That might be counterproductive. Is this 135 or 136? Okay, we're going to 136 next. Okay. These guys were completely closed for an entire week. And now they're they're just opening up. Yeah, three times smarter than a dog. That does not surprise me. Dogs are not smart. No dog I've ever seen. I'll defend Fox. My my dog Fox is pretty smart. What kind Penny of dog? So much. What kind of dog is Fox? She's she's the Mexican <laughs> dog. <laughs> the type of dog you see running in the wild in Mexico. A couple years ago, I made fun of the. And I just randomly said it because I just happened to be coming back from a vacation in Mexico where literally all the dogs look exactly the same. And in, in comes his dog, and sure enough, looks like just one of these random mutts that I saw in Mexico. Skinny dog. And I'm like, you look like every dog in Mexico. <laughs> and he, he just overheard me, and he just like lost it. Like, I can't believe you said that. It's like, yeah, Chihuahua. And you're like, no, the, the, the wild there, ones. Every single dog looks like that. Show the bounce mushroom. No, we're good. We've, we've seen bounce mushrooms before. We're boring. Still a hater. Dumb looking mushroom. <laughs> Which is funny. Is there one in your live sale? Do you have a no, prior one? No, we don't. But I'm going to be buying that one of your bounce mushrooms eventually. As soon as you can get me another one that doesn't die. Yeah, my, I, think, I think a clownfish was snuggling in it somewhat. And it, it just hasn't been growing like they it had in the past. So I moved it. Clownfish is nowhere right around it anymore. My favorite fish is a orange spot filefish. Mine would be a copper band butterfly. My Achilles I actually tang have is, one now. My Achilles tang is a close second. And the blonde naso tang has got a lot of personality. Goes to tractor supply for a 110-gallon watering <laughs> trough to use for his pet pigs. Litter box, yeah. Uh, any strawberry shortcakes? Uh, no, not right now. Um, our acros took it on the chin a little bit. If we had one, I'm sure it's not with the living. Are those the ones you got from me in that, in that front tank there? Oh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some are still alive. This one is yeah. also from your tank. This yeah. red dragon. So strawberry shortcakes, those don't even frag that well. They, they're very susceptible to, to ailments once you cut them. 
These red dragons look really good though, because they're fresh out of Nathan's tank, not mine. Get them while they're hot. Alive. Get them while they're still alive. <laughs> Except 142. You shouldn't listen to Than, he doesn't know what he's doing. So strangely, this variety of Montipora was a total champ through all the all the issues. It's done like fantastic. Which is great because this is typically the more expensive stuff. Everybody's just asking, like, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? So what's your favorite crustacean? I like the blood red shrimp. Is that That's pretty cool, yeah. Is a, sna a snail is not a... Are no, snails? those are mollusks. Yeah. Are those crustaceans? Or mollusks, crustaceans. Hmm. No, I don't think they are. No, they wouldn't. Don't say it. No, totally different. Are we on 144 yet? That. Can you can you dump that comment? No. no. Forever. It's on here forever. It's on interwebs and toast. Should I start making videos? Yes. If you can keep up with it, it's not that easy. Like, um, you know, I I, I kind of give uh, you know YouTube grief for like promoting channels I hate, but it's really exhausting to be successful on YouTube. Like. <clears throat> Especially if you're the prime personality to it, also, like um, I, I can I can tell you for a fact, the folks that are doing this as, as a personality that seems so upbeat and happy and funny and, and having such a good time, hundred percent, aren't. It's a lot of work. They're probably exhausted, and they're probably like, you know, just wishing that. They could do something like that that was easier that they didn't necessarily always have to like get themselves up to be that upbeat and energetic for it because it's really exhausting and now that like a lot of people are going more towards like a vlogging style um it's it's so hard on their lives it's like ruining their marriages and stuff oh, let's go to one this is 146 okay good <clears throat> yeah so they're they're like they're getting they're they're breaking up their their families and stuff like that over it and having to pause their channel, but they can't stop because it makes so much money. So it's rough. I didn't realize the extent of it. I think I saw a clip on Reddit of some guy who was just eating at a restaurant and he was streaming, and it was just him. Mm -hmm. And he's streaming, and somebody pulled some hijinks on him, which was pretty funny. But I was like, so people are watching him eat at a restaurant. He's making money off of that, and but he has he's always streaming. Yeah. I was like, I, I didn't realize that it was to that extent. Yeah. Because I'm old. I'm out of touch. I'm I'm old, but I'm not out of touch. And I see that, and I'm like, I know what, what effort it takes to edit a video and to take the time to even shoot a video. It's it's rough. It's a really, really rough schedule. So if, and yeah, it's like, it's like uh, if you're not successful with it, sure, just drop it. But if you are successful with it, then you're stuck. You're like in jail. Because it's like, oh, I've, you're stuck this is my jail. job. And I make, you know, I close streaming. to seven figures yeah, doing stop, this or something. Stop videos and the income stops. Yeah. <clears throat> so we will be moving on to 148 in a moment. You should say you like hermits. Yeah, I love hermit crabs. I'm saying that very facetiously. I have like two in this whole place. How's your Frankenstein mushroom? I think those are bounce mushrooms. I have that kind. Of, yeah, it's good. I cut it, and it's still good. Is it called a Frankenstein mushroom? Uh, yeah. It's it's like a, it's got a blue base with like a minty green top, but it's mm. got the pink bubbles around the rim, like oh. the little tentacles on the end of mushrooms. Okay. It balloon. They balloon up a bit. And they're they're pink. Are these purple haze Montes plating or encrusting? They are encrusting. I only have 1,200 subs and I'm tired. It, it, it goes both ways. Like if you have a huge audience and you just walk away from, or you have a small audience and nobody cares, but if you have like a huge, huge, huge audience and that's like now like your livelihood, you are stuck. It's time to like start hiring people. So now you have to hire a full-time editor. It's, it's rough. 
It's rough, it's expensive to do YouTube successfully. Any clams? No, no clams. Uh, are pectinia a type of chalice? No, they're, they're, they're kind of its own thing. Are we looking at T5 lighting? Yeah, this is a mix of the blue plus and coral plus. My favorite. This chalice came from Nathan's tank. Oh yeah, that's a good grower. That's my input, that's my commentary. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he liked it so much that he sold it to me. Because it, it was one that just grew too fast for me and for my preferences and it, st it stings things and my tank's packed, so give it space. Okay, next up, one fitty. I'm curious, has Tidal Gardens made any money on YouTube other than the coral sales? Yes, yes it has. So, um, unless you're running an ad blocker, which I do, um, all those ads that, 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 uh, that play before videos, the content creator gets a cut of that. I forget exactly what, it's like a 60-40 split or something. Any digis? I think we went, no, no digis, sorry. Sorry, Redman. Oh, shipping. We will not be shipping Monday. It's the Memorial Day holiday, so FedEx is closed on Monday. So uh, any any orders, uh, the earliest they will go out is Tuesday for delivery Wednesday. That's been your shipping PSA. You'll get a few more of these. <laughs> You'll get at least one more. At least two more. Okay, 151. Does your friend have any videos of his tank? Uh, maybe. But I'll show you real quick, real quick what his tank looks like. Bang. Yeah, That's his tank. My video production is not as fancy as this. It's usually just a cell phone, so... Look at this scrub. He still has, like, euphilia and stuff. <laughs> no, it's, it's a very nice aquarium. It's, it's one of the nicest in, in this area that I know of. I'm always looking for, for people's tanks that I can, that I can shoot video of. Um, and there's not a ton of people. Like, who, who, I don't know who has a great tank around here. Like, some people were going to have good tanks and they became barbecuers instead and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So, Mike became a professional cyclist or something. Yeah, mountain biker. Yeah, he sold, all, sold off his tank, so... Yeah, the, the mega tanks or the, the full-blown reef okay. tanks. So this is 152 now? Okay, hold on. I need to check my overlay here. How good are fluorescent lights at growing coral? I would argue they are the best light at growing coral. What par do you keep Montipora at? Two to three hundred is probably what I would shoot for. How long did it take to grow those SPS in that in your tank? Um Almost all of them have been trimmed back, but I'd say probably a year to two years gets them to that size. And almost all of them started from small frags. Yeah. When things go right with, uh, with SPS, they go really right. So coral growth is, to me, is probably the best indicator that things are going great. Like if I'm seeing like ridiculous growth and good coloration, you don't have to change a whole lot. Would you use T5 over LED? I do use T5 over LED. However, Nathan's here, his tank is all LED. And so clearly you can have success doing it both ways. Unless you do something dumb like me and kill off all your corals. But that's not the lighting's fault. No, yeah. It doesn't matter what lighting. <laughs> yeah. 155. Uh, 15 centimeters a year. What's that in, uh, in barbarian units? Uh, is that like 7? Is it 2.2 centimeters per inch? So 7? Something like that. 7 inches? That one? That might be about right. Per branch, I mean, if you have multiple branches, you're... 
one branch might grow about seven inches if it's happy. Yeah, I mean, stuff can grow completely out of the water if things go right. <clears throat> so John is asking, I enjoy discussing the hobby with people, and I'm considering spending some time doing YouTube. Seems like your advice maybe to not do so. Ah, oh, no, absolutely not. Um, you see, don't plan to make money on it. Yeah, so, unless you're gonna go hardcore into it. So right? here's the thing: like, YouTube is the only reason anybody knows who the hell I am. Otherwise, I'd just be some weirdo in the back in his backyard growing coral, probably not breaking even. Like. No, so YouTube clearly has had, you know, benefits for me. And it's like, I, I enjoy, you know, learning new skills. I, I learned how to do photography. I learned how to do videography. Like, all through this whole YouTube thing. I learned how to do live broadcasting through YouTube. So, I, it, it's spun off into, like, other interests. So, go for it. I mean, you, and you, you can meet halfway cool people occasionally. And that's always a, a nice thing. Like, uh, real quick in chat. If you do not live within the United States, please just put a comment as to where you're living, if you want to. Uh, you just, just, to just to give you an idea of, like, the reach uh, of YouTube. So, like, I, I was surprised at how many peop people from other countries have reached out to say, to say hello. This is 157. Yeah, see, these hills have eyes. Chalices look like they don't got eyes right now. They're supposed to have green eyes, I believe. They'll regain it eventually. 30 second delay. Yeah. So, you know how some people put skele coral skeletons in the filtration system to put calcium back in the tank? Do you know where the skeletons come from? My tank. Dead corals. You can either use like dead corals, or you can buy like the uh, the stuff from the from the ocean. The stuff from the ocean is like a lot, uh, a lot heavier and a lot more nutrient dense. Can you keep frog spawn and octa spawn next to each other? Yeah, they they they'll, they'll fight, but it's not going to be deadly. So these pastel pink chalices will develop yellow eyes. So we've got UK, Israel, MPLS, not sure what that is. No, no, I don't know. Germany, UK, North Korea, yeah. No, you, you, no, you, you don't, you don't North Messages Korea. don't get out from North Korea. <laughs> you don't have electricity right now, North Korea. <laughs> I've seen the Fans satellite specifically map. blocked in North Korea. I have too many ties to Seoul. South Africa, Bahamas. Bay Area, home of the Warriors, home of the the, the three one lead. <laughs> Minneapolis. See, it started with Bay Area reefs. I said outside of the U.S. <laughs> and all these Warrior fans are like, I'm from the Bay. <laughs> Sorry. Explain sorry. to him that that is part of the U.S. <laughs> You're still part of the U.S. Just because you got KD doesn't mean you get yeah. to swear off the rest yeah. of the country. Yeah. 160. Kekistan. <laughs> Kekistan. <laughs> Watch, that's actually a place. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> With but, a thriving reef community. But, but, I, but I, I, I get the joke, if it's a joke at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Watch. They're, they're going to be like burning my, my effigy over there. Somebody wants to know who, who, what your favorite lips are. Um, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I'm guessing it was auto-corrected from LPS, but... 161? Yeah. Actually... Yeah, she, she'd, be, she'd be up there. Favorite LPS. She'd be okay. <laughs> Twin Cities is like another country. It had it had prints, so it must be. These are looking kind of cool. It, I agree. 
You can buy them. That way your tank will get better. <laughs> uh, I'm so mean. So it's kind of weird because right now I'm in the we're in the mode of getting ready to do a home edition, and we've been in that mode for like nine months of planning and knowing we're gonna do it. So my coral fever, thankfully, has kind of subsided for a little bit. Plus, pricing on things was getting real crazy on some stuff, and that, that kind of and even though I paid it a few times, it really started to sour my in or just. Not sour it, but reduce my interest. But I haven't been just going crazy with coral recently. I'm running out of room too, but that never stops me. Mm -hmm. But once that home edition's done, man, I'm telling you, home edition is like like so that's sort of, that sort of project is like the most stressful thing while it's going on, but it's the most rewarding thing once it's done. Yeah, I, uh, just the thought of what be, how nice it'll be once it's done. Yeah, it, that that has to carry you through like you know the, the ridiculous, terrible process. Mm -hmm. All right, so that got us to 163. We're gonna be uh, some moving some stuff around here. I'll put up the the rules of engagement for the folks that are kind of new to this stream. Oh, uh, Javier Lola, Tijuana, Mexico. I've been there before. Somebody looked there. Okay, let's just look at Kekistan is fictional. It's actually a meme. Uh, we got fooled by a meme. We got memed. That's how old we are. Speaking of we memes, got fooled by me uh. he he sent me a picture of his Halloween costume once, and it was like this um, this balloon pink, pink balloon where anemone. he was supposed to be like an anemone, and then he had his little daughter as like a little, dressed up as a clownfish, and I posted that to Reddit, and he, he it made front page of Reddit. So I I, I the, memed him for real. <laughs> yes, but then the what the in the comments what it it broke down to what the what they thought it looked like wasn't flattering <laughs> it was amusing though <laughs> was not flattering it was full on reddit treatment it was well worth it okay i'm gonna go run and use the bathroom for just a second you can ask nathan some questions while he's here oh my looking gosh, at his the pressure glorious reef tank I'm starting to i'll be right back sweat Ugh. all right let's do some giveaways What we got going on? Croatia. There's a lot of pressure. I didn't even expect to have sole usage of this. Oh no. Well, Bay Area Reefs, do you have any skin in the game here? What do you have to do if uh, the Cavs win again? When they win again? Dan's mom likes blue SPS. Or at least that's what they always buy from me. Getting back in here. That was a lot of pressure, like the, the random, hey, you're in charge and you're going solo here and I hadn't prepared any material. It was just, <laughs> I, I kind of froze for a little bit. Go. <laughs> yeah. How, how, many pe how many people did we lose because of that? Yeah, we're down to two. <laughs> Good right. job, you, Nathan. You've got a steady crowd, though. Good job, Nathan. Yeah. Go penguins. My tank is six foot by thirty inches front to back and twenty two inches tall and it's right around two hundred gallons. Who made it? Is it AGE? AGE. Are they still in business? I believe so. Okay. I never hear of them when uh, I hear about people getting a new tank these days. It's all like reef savvy and stuff like that now. <clears throat> Reef Savvy does good work. Yeah. And you pay for it. Yeah. So, Ben, you can shout louder at me. It's all right. <laughs> Go Penguins. I'm a Red Wings fan. Leave Nathan alone. He did fine. So, it's, get, so, so D from trash. Brooklyn. Oh, you're he, giving you were giving me trash. 
Uh, so he was, uh, he's another YouTuber. Mm. So you, so you got, you got celebrity backup. See, there you go. Please subscribe. I asked Bay Area, Bay Area Reefs if you got any, um, if he has any skin in the game. He keeps saying you have to wear a shirt. Unique candy cane. Never seen that before. It might not stay that color, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> There's some weird interactions here. Next up, 167. That's like, it's a... Uh, Oh wait, 167. He's shrunken. <clears throat> what number are we going up to? 230 something? So we have, we've got some time left. We probably have another hour, hour or so, give or take. What's up with the giveaway? <laughs> did you hear me? <laughs> did you hear me as you left? I think I did. I I like, let's hmm, let's let's do some out. giveaways. Lock this out. Some nice mushrooms right here, ready for prime giveaways. So when 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 I uh, when I show you a picture of his tank, the first person to screen grab the corals you want out of it and send it to Nathan <laughs> at freecoralgiveaway.com. <laughs> I'll hook you up. But the wings ain't in it this year, so we have to go for the pings. So the person to be talking um, hockey with was Michael. He's like, he's a bit of a hockey fan, I think. I think, but I think he's a Penguins guy. He likes all the Pittsburgh teams. Mm. Cause he grew up, I think he grew up in Youngstown area. Yeah, area. Youngstown area. So those people are all so confused. And <laughs> well, they're, they're not astray. clearly not Cleveland, right? Yeah, yeah. Clearly not Cleveland. Oh. Yeah, t Youngstown people are really conflicted and yeah, just they're weird folk. But then you have like like for for me for example, it's like I love the Cavaliers and I like the Indians and I absolutely detest the Cleveland Browns because of their failure. Yeah, but but more than their failure, I think it's because of like. Did you like them back when like Kozar back in the not so 80s? much? No, not so much. Were and you it, not into football, or you didn't like? I, the I wasn't so much into football, but I did see like the fumble live. I do too. I did too. I think I was six, and I remember it because I was like in the basement of a crowd, and I was cheering, and everyone else was like distraught, and I didn't understand <laughs> why. And then they told me he fumbled it at the goal line, and uh, my life has never been the same. Yeah, so... So did you have a favorite team? Or do you have a favorite team? For football? Yeah. Not really. The only thing I, I kind of, like, look for now is just, like, I kind of, like, follow if somebody's doing something great. So, like, I follow Tom Brady a little bit because he also went to Michigan while I was there. That's how old I am. We used to, <laughs> we used to sling the ball around a little bit. Well, I, I just remember, like, um, so the previous quarterback was Brian Greasy, and... He was like graduating or, or leaving to the NFL, and I was like, "So who's gonna be our quarterback now?" And I remember one of our housemates was like, uh, "Like Tom Brady." I'm like, "Who the hell is Tom Brady?" Oh, and great! It's like, oh, turns out he's okay. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 2000 and no, 1997. From from Michigan? Yeah, from Michigan. Yeah, so that's a while. So yeah, I, I guess I'm like a little older than Tom Brady. And he's about to hang him up. So it's your 20-year uh, college graduation. I know. Isn't that kind of weird to think? Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> long ago. Yeah, it's like I I, uh, I ran into somebody um, at a at a restaurant, and um, I, I was with like you know friends from college, and they're like wondering like who's this girl? You've never mentioned this girl before. And I'm like, yeah, because she went to my high school and this is the first time I've seen her in 20 something years. Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa, when you put it that way, it's like, <clears throat> it's so long ago.
all of YouTube's saltwater communities on the stream. <laughs> a lot of people have been on the stream. Miss Saltwater Tank's not here. No, she's out. Um, Coralfish 12G is not here. Um, your, there's a few others. Your peeps, your, yeah. your inner circles. Or my regulars. Um, have you been testing? Do you know what your calcium and elk levels have been at recently? Here? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they've been perfect. Like, like four, like 420. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like eight or nine, nine or ten, something like that. The only thing that's not okay is the phosphate level. But I'm not going to worry about that ever again. So I I, uh, I stopped into um, Aaron's Aquarium's live show, and he, he was so funny. He because they were all like, "Oh my gosh, I know I've made it because Tidal Gardens is in the is in the chat. We have to talk about like calcium reactors or something now. <laughs> we have to be all serious." Yeah, we all miss miss. I'm gonna go to Than's College Reunion with an autograph book. Yeah, I don't know about that. Resume. All your hand out your resume to all your uh, roommates. That'd be a good point. Uh, yeah. Not you, but somebody else I go should. there and. So, it was kind of funny. Uh, so, uh, my friend's company uh, that did really well is called Twilio, and I was reading this article about like the you know the top paying tech jobs in Silicon Valley and Twilio was on that list because I think their average salary was like hundred and eighty thousand dollars or something like that and I said and I, was, I told my mom it's like hey mom you know like like you know this is John's it's like wow John makes hundred and eighty thousand dollars like no mom he does not make hundred and eighty thousand dollars he pays two hundred <laughs> plus people hundred and eighty thousand dollars on average to work at his company it's like All right, I need my potty break. You're out. It's all you on this one. Thing. I got it. I got a coach. Is that a house open? Yep. Just go through the garage. All right. So this is 177, correct? Correct. Right. Nice. <clears throat> How are those T5 quads you got discounted? They're doing great. We've, we've gotten even more and more and more as we've gone. Now it's not going to be any fun when we have to replace the bulbs because I think that we did a rough count. It's over, it's over a hundred bulbs. One seventy-eight. Bruce Hansen. I was going to send my resume to Than. He said we could smoke weed at work. I don't think I said that. I said that if we did drug testing, I wouldn't hold it against you or something like that. Favorite skimmer, I'm not sure if I have a favorite skimmer, but I'm starting to warm up to Vertex. Those, the only problem is that the Vertex series don't get very large, but every single tank I've seen that has a Vertex on it, I'm amazed by how quiet they are and how nice they are. Does the LA Laker scroll corals grow as much? Don't quite understand. Um, they can kinda. Um, not super fast, but they do. <clears throat> I am all ready for the summer. Not ready in the sense that like, so for the, for the folks that don't know, this entire industry completely just crashes when it comes to summertime. So there's like, you know, people go outside, they have fun, they go to Cedar Point, they get on a boat or whatever. But yeah, when it comes to their tank, oftentimes it gets neglected, so it can be rough. Oops. <clears throat> so 181 will be some green star pops there. I also run the Facebook for Atlanta Reef Club and I share a lot of your material with fellow reefers. Thank you. Yeah, skimmers is tough. Like a lot of, 
There's been a lot of advancements to make skimmers good in a smaller package, um, but at the same time, a lot of like manufacturing has been outsourced to China, so you get like lower quality pumps. Some of the pumps from, from Europe are like extremely expensive and then they break and then you can't get a replacement because the ship from Germany hasn't arrived yet and it's not gonna come for three months. So there's, there's been like a lot of stuff involving skimmers that make me not that crazy about any particular one. But so far, Vertexes, I just wish they made Vertexes that could handle a thousand gallons, which they kind of don't. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Reefers don't go outside. We're too busy checking alk and, and phosphate. Yeah. Tunzi. Haven't used that skimmer. Some I know some people that like a lot of Tunzi stuff though. Ah, let's get back over. Let Nathan back in. Actually, I'm going to look around. Is that all right? Yeah, feel free. The only living corals are yours, probably. <laughs> Enjoy taking a look. No, I, I think I'm overblowing the situation, but... 183. Uh, will you list any co golden torch today, by chance? Unfortunately, no. We don't have any. A lot of those... Um, Australian euphilia can really struggle um, when they first arrive. So, and they're, they're super expensive. So oftentimes um, I, I would rather purchase them from a hobbyist like Nathan rather than, um, than bringing in directly. So I tend to not have as much on hand. It's always like a coin flip. It's like, okay, I spent like, you know, $100 on this. Flip, it's dead. Flip, oh, this one lasted. So it's, it's bad in that sense. Any elegance coming up? I don't think so. That's that's actually on on our shopping list of stuff to get. Um, so that is some, something that we do get directly from the from the importer. And usually, like we get their small size, and we just buy the entire stock. Like if he has fifty avail available, we'll buy all of them. Because, but there there haven't been a lot lately. Uh, what's Nathan's channel? He doesn't have one. So when you, whenever you see his tank, it's basically on my channel. I'll, I'll have to go over there and actually shoot an update video. Hmm. Do you know people with a Marineland corner flow? I don't. Sorry. And we're back into the Zoas. So uh, this entire live show started off with like 50 or 60 Zoas. And so we're getting into our second batch of Zoas for the folks that um, probably missed the beginning. One eighty-six. These are the orchid Zoas. For all the goofiness that we've had with with some of our systems here, the Zoas by far were the ones that made it out the the, the best. Okay, just checking some things here quickly. There's a ton of people on stream. This is great. One eight seven. It's a mix. It looks like a, a mix of Radioactive Dragon Eye and the previous guys. So Roscoe's Reef with Scott. Fan, do you find coral from hobbyist aquariums more hardy than the ones that are imported? There's no question. They are a lot. A lot more. And that, I guess, um, it's, a, it's a good distinction as well. Um, even with stores, uh, because the ones that take propagation more seriously might high, have a higher price point. Um, and, and I'm not gonna even go through the names, you know the names. But the ones that, are, that have the best reputations tend to be the most focused on, on aquaculture and long-term sustainability. And that has a direct impact on, on how well these corals are gonna do for you. Um, there's, there's some other places that, um, 
that are more focused on just bringing stuff in and getting it right back out, which is fine. That is their business model, right? And that's the business model of every like wholesaler or whatever. But when there's like a huge risk component when it comes after all of that travel and and if you purchase it right as it comes in, I mean, it is like there's a huge die off percentage at that point. And so you might save money, but it's like if it dies, did you didn't save money. So you kind of have to be be wary of that. So if so if you're asking, you know, should you uh, you know tailor your spending more towards hobbyists and things like that? Obviously up to you, but yeah, I, I would absolutely say that that hobbyists um, are going to be doing a lot better off with um, with regard to like just the, the stability and the overall health of corals. Okay, 189. <clears throat> just just having it local local or more local is a big factor and having it grown in aquariums is also a big factor and you know when it comes in from the ocean they're dirty they're dirty they're dying and rotting so yeah it's it's, it's no it's no surprise um uh, friend is still gone no he's still here he's just looking around like he basically came in and i just like sat him right down so he hasn't been here in how long how long has it been since your last time you're here nathan like, I don't know. Like months, if not a year. So, uh, a year is pushing. I think it's shorter than that. <laughs> I like your uh, bubble tip anemone tank. Is it sweet? <laughs> I can't believe how many are in there. You're like, whoa. <laughs> They're all along. It's like, I can't even count that. All high. along the rim. <laughs> you'll, lose, you'll lose count if you yeah. started. <clears throat> so he's back. Do you have any multiple grafted acros on one plug? No. Um, that's something that we probably wouldn't be successful with. Other, have you ever seen a grafted acro? Because I haven't even seen one. I've seen, one. it's the same acro, just different colors. Mm -hmm. But any acros that get near each other in mine, they grow over each other. They don't Mine graft. instantly kill. <laughs> They're a tad dark, Ben. There we go. First time here, can you give me a tutorial about how to purchase from you guys? Um, so if I, so Javier, are you, are you in Mexico? Because we can't, ship, we can't ship outside the US. But we'll quickly just put this slide up. Um, for the folks that are interested, uh, you go to titlegardens.com. And in the live sale link, it's like this little uh, red flashing dot in the top left navigation. Uh, that'll take you to the live sale page and you'll see a numbered list of all these corals. So for example, this coral is 191. Um, and so if, if, if 191 is still available and you wanted it for $10, just put it in your shopping cart and check out like it's a regular item. Going back to that, shipping is $39.99 flat rate, free over 250. And just make sure that uh, you just pay for shipping once. So just have the one shipping module. Um, and in, in order to get the coral, you actually have to check out with it. But yeah, uh, going back to that whole thing, it's, it's US only. <clears throat> 192. Back in the day, there were several big name speakers who talked at big conferences about making money from a few small tanks in the basement. Um, I guess it depends on what you're growing. I yeah, guess. you could make money. You can a few small tanks. I don't think you could make a living, but you could make money for sure if you have chalices or bounce mushrooms. Bounce mushrooms. Really, anything. Yeah. Like because there's always going to be like a, a, a hot item in this hobby. Um, and, and like the reason why I don't put any judgments onto it is because at any given time every coral had been that hot item. Like zoanthids at one time were $60, $100, $150 dollars a polyp for, for certain ones. There's so, at certain times there's like SPS that are very, very, very expensive. Um, I remember when like a Superman Monte Coral was like $90 or something. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, so at any given time, something is gonna be 
frankly overpriced. That's kind of like the way, that's how trendiness works, right? So right now, uh, Rhodactis mushrooms are very high priced. Chalices used to be very high priced. Before that, it was probably Acros and Zoas that were very high priced. And it, you know, it's just, it's just this wave of interest that comes and goes. And so if somebody were to have a home aquarium that was successful catching waves and selling it before that wave goes away, they could do some, they, they could do some work. Or just have a tank full of stuff no one wants. That could also happen. Then, given selling coral out of small tanks in the basement, it takes a lot of effort then from for finding a buyer, and if yeah. you need to ship, you know, you, that's it starts to become a, a hassle. If that's not your full time gig, it's still a hassle, I guess. If it is your full time gig, but that's what you do. Yeah, and the thing is, like, the customer acquisition is the hardest part of the business side of, the, of this. Like, growing coral, keeping coral is not the hardest part. That's actually the fun part. The hard part is sell, selling coral. Like, the, the lengths that people have to do to sell coral. I mean, there's, there's tons of people with basement setups, and, and it's, it's crazy. One guy I know, he's actually from this area, he, uh, he told me how much he spent um, in travel expenses to go to, like, the different frag swaps. It's, it's well into the six figures for travel expenses. And I'm like, oh, wow. That, that's a lot. That's, that's, a, that's a lot, lot. So, it's not easy. Stay in, stay in school, kids. This guy's closed up for some weird reason. So when I'm looking at something like this, I always think, is there anything obviously wrong that I'm missing? Maybe he was just upset. But like, uh, like the, the longer you're in this hobby, the more you can see when some, something just doesn't look right. You know, it's like you just, you, you learn to like, uh, I, I don't trust it. So I'm like looking there and I'm like, I can't see anything that jumps out at me. Uh, oh, that looks like trouble. And man, that's going to take some work. And man, do I not want to do <laughs> deal with that right now. No. It's a little thing bobbing there. That's a uh, bubble algae from something. I don't know how that survived. Because there's, there's a fox face in that tank. You mentioned that you like to get coral from home hobbyist. Would you be willing to buy corals from an East Coast hobbyist? Uh, it really depends. Cause like, so most people I don't think would have any issue with that. I buy everything in person. So um, if I don't like see it with my own eyes right there, I typically don't buy it. So, you know, the reason why I buy, I buy from his tank, not just because it's a really nice tank, it's also because he's within an hour of me. <laughs> so. I'm sure that there's folks that are further away that with, with fantastic stuff, but like I have to see it. Coming down the home stretch here. <clears throat> Somebody call it, what's this comment here? Your friend's still gone, must have had to drop a deuce. <laughs> no, the one right above it. <laughs> Since you're semi-famous, do you get any weird fans or creepy messages? And show the tank that you showed in the video a while back. That's awesome build. Was that Paul's tank? Uh, I don't know which build. It might be, it might be Will's. Will's tank is like... By the way, that's um, an update on that tank is going to be coming up. I was, I was over at his place um, Thursday. And I, I shot some shot some footage because the the first video I shot of his tank it was just empty it was just moving into place but now he's up and running he's running aqua forest his, his, his acros look insane already uh, do I get any weird fans or creepy messages only from people you know <laughs> well I do occasionally. Uh, but it's, I think that that goes to the territory of, of YouTube. 
Like, I, I had this saying that, like, if somebody doesn't call you gay, it's just because you haven't made it yet. And so, like, uh, unless you're getting, like, regular homophobic slurs, it's just because you're just not big enough. Like, YouTube is such a such a high level of toxicity. Like, you have to expect, you know, you're haters and trolls. If you're not facing it, then you need to grow your audience. Yeah, it's like, if you're not <laughs> facing it, it's because nobody sees you. That's a bigger problem than the haters. Like, that's a problem that you need to deal with. Like, haters ban them do whatever you want but if, if, if you don't have an audience like multinational corporations pay a lot of money to develop audiences so that, that's a much bigger much, much bigger problem than the creeps I can deal with the creeps all day at least they're paying attention it's like jokes on you I made money just from you watching the video <laughs> probably has ad blocker shipping um, Monday is uh, Memorial Day, and so uh, FedEx is not going to be shipping that day. So all packages will be going out, well, most packages will be going out Tuesday for delivery Wednesday. Uh, PSA. I go to the live sale on the site, but there are no photos. Correct. You have to watch this stream. The reason why we're able to price this stuff so low is that we're not taking photos of individual ones and posting them. Two oh one. So if you need to, to see uh, a previous number, you can just scrub back in the video to see what, what those are. So your mom's sitting back there watching it on a laptop? Yeah. And I saw she has an anonymous anonymous account. That she's <laughs> she's one of the trolls. Oh yeah, she's yeah. trolling. Yeah. It's like this is why you know find wife. She's got <laughs> she's got three <laughs> she's got three systems going or three ta a tablet, the phone, the laptop, and she's just trolling. Your mother so disappointed. No grandkids. <laughs> Cats no count. And I just, and I just lost all my Asian viewers after that. And or uh, Welkin was really chatting her up though at uh, oh. my house. Oh, they yeah. were having a good conversation. That's funny. My mom loves kids so yeah. much. She's like, you need to get grandkids. Like you have grandkids. There's like two cats. Um, so, J. Lards, Aquaforest, Zeovid, or ATI? Um, why is it hard to grow coral? In okay, I need to get Will on this so he can talk Aquaforest with you. My experience, not positive. So, uh, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show his tank and show you know his, his success, and you guys can chat it out. Because I don't got the answer, Sway. Yeah, seriously, when it comes to like ultra low nutrient, I'm like, how sway? Let's see. 2.04. Almost, almost to the end. Almost to the end. Cottonwood flying in here? Yeah. So that's another thing that could be affecting. So, so my problem with aquaforest might have nothing to do with aquaforest. It might just be like, oh, yeah, uh, it's spring and there's tons of pollen in your tank, <laughs> and insecticide. Yeah. Sorry, that could that could be a thing. Yeah. So uh, I'll have to get Will on at some point. So so he's done Red Sea, he's done Zeo of it, and he's done aquaforest. So he could probably give you first-hand knowledge. Mr. Butters. You have no grandkids. We no love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, this is terrible, but I, I do my fake Chinese accent more and more the more I watch Silicon Valley. Did you watch Silicon Valley? Uh, I have not. Oh, well, I, I saw the first episode, I thought it was funny, and then I just. Because there's this character anymore. named Jin Yang, and he has like this broken, you know, you know Chinese accent, and I, it's just like. I just can't stop can't imitating stop that character. So he, he keeps prank calling his, his landlord. And so the landlord will be like, you know, like, you know, talking to, to people or something, you get a phone call and it's, it's you know, Jin Yang is like, <laughs> it's like, er Ehrlich Buckman, this is your mother. You not my baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's just terrible. <laughs> 
So if anybody else out there watches Silicon Valley, I'm, I'm loving. I, 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 I just enjoy the hell out of I it. I did see that they are bringing it back for another season. Mm -hmm. there, yep. So there's only two shows I'm watching right now. I'm watching that and American Gods. Have you seen that? No, I found it the ads intriguing, but I have not yeah. watched it. Have you ever have you read the book, the Neil Gaiman book? No. Pretty good. It's it's interesting and, and it's it's very stylized and it's very like um, the visuals are very intense. <laughs> yeah, see this guy gets it. Terra Reef Aquariums, not hot dog. <laughs> it's like he he made an app that was supposed to be like like seafood, you know? And it was, it was like, um, it was supposed to be, uh, like, the, what's that app? Shazam for, for food. So, so like you click it. You click it as it tells you what it is. So like, it was like a hot dog. It's like, okay, you correctly identified hot dog. They went over to pizza. It's like, not hot dog. <laughs> so this app does hot it's dog or and not, not hot, hot dog. dog. <laughs> And so uh, that, that that app got that technology got purchased by uh, Periscope because they had a problem with like you know guys like you know flashing, <laughs> so they needed like an algorithm to do hot dog versus not hot dog. <laughs> Bought by Periscope. Let's see. Oh, Pakistani Denzel. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. He, he's he's chatting with this girl on, on this like this uh, beta of this uh, video chat, and it was like blurry at first, and so like she she couldn't see what he really looked like, and he described himself as Pakistani, Pakistani Denzel, <laughs> and like and, and once she finally saw like the high res thing, she's like, oh, that's great. I'll have to tell my my fiance all about this app. <laughs> Two eleven. A send to Brazil. Sorry, no. We we can only ship to the U.S. And I guess like that 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 seafood app is actually they actually made it. It's out in the app store. <laughs> Cross marketing. Like it. 212. Mysterious floating bubble. It's magic. It's CGI. Yeah, so that, that's what I get to look forward to tomorrow. Silicon Valley and American Gods. I have no life. Uh, Javier, how often do you guys go live? Um, about once a month. We try to we try to schedule it every month. Very dark, Ben. Oh wow. Yeah, there we go. Better. Why don't you do weekly live sales? That's a good question. <laughs> Everybody here is like. Psh yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know why we don't. Because, I, I mean, would it get stale? I mean, here's the thing. Like, my worry is if I did a weekly live show, I wonder if, like, only five people would end up showing up. Because it just wouldn't be special. Be, uh... I don't know. This is a green Redactus. Green Harry. Uh, totally unrelated. What's your favorite movie? I, I don't know. I have no answer. I think mine is Pan's Labyrinth. But it's all in Spanish. I like that a lot. I like Pulp Fiction. I've got, I've got like a top five. So it's that, Pulp Fiction, probably some movie by David Fincher that I can't think of. Snatch is a movie that I could always just Snatch sit down is good. and watch. Fifth Element's another one I can just sit down and watch. Any part. So, you know what, speaking of Fifth Element, um, I'm, I'm interested in that guy's new movie. Uh, yeah. Valerian. Yeah, yep. I, I, like, I like his visual. Absolutely. <clears throat> More recently, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those that I can just 
Have you seen the second one? I haven't seen that. I did see it. Was it good? I enjoyed it, yes. I don't, I don't like Marvel movies as much as most people do, but they're okay. They're safe. Blue Green Symposium's a little closed up right now, but he's I do there. need to see a good, like, thriller or suspense movie. I enjoy those, and I haven't seen... Have you seen Get Out? No. Get Out's good. I've heard it, it is. Yeah, I, I know enjoy nothing Get about Out. it, though, so... Blade Runner? Blade Runner's good. I'm looking forward to the to the sequel. I'm looking forward to Dark Tower, even though the, the trailers don't look that good. <laughs> 217 is a snack. Hot dog. <laughs> that is a hot dog. It's like... Not a hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> not hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a snack. Yeah. No touch snack. Uh, see, I'm trying to think. Uh, like, what other? Have you seen uh, the witch? I like that movie. Is it relatively new? Uh, within the last five years. Mm. Never heard of it. It's like this uh, Victorian, like or like Puritan family uh, that had go, like basically got ostracized by their community, went off into the woods, and there's like there's a witch, and this family slowly just like devours itself because like they they got like hexed basically. It's really well done. Will my kids enjoy it? No. Six and four? No. No, they will not. My kids were they were watching The Force Awakens and the part where they're on Han Solo's freighter and those monsters get out and they're running around. Lexi no problem with it. Welkin just like nope. Just got up and walked out. <laughs> he was done. He was he didn't watch anymore. No like, more. Nope. Four year old, nope. He grabbed his blanket and nope. And walked up walked upstairs. So I've noticed that like um, the kids are very sensitive to like oh, stuff yeah. like violence. So, so oh, I, I, not the violence so much as the 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 drama and the the build up. Like if okay. they're building up attention in a movie, you you know the director's like it's working because the kids are feeling it and they're getting tense and tense. Really, and the same thing happens with the video games when I'm like playing Zelda and there's like. A big monster fight like they're both one like huddles down the other one's like jumping behind the couch Aww. can't watch it's a, it's really funny but you know if that the, they're trying to build tension in a movie those kids they pick up on that and it, it works so what exactly is a snack coral uh what's the what's the genus isaurus it's an isaurus polyp and at, at night it'll uh, it'll open up and it'll be like a black polyp Almost like a black paleothoa at the end. This guy's like angry. Let's go to the next one. How does the filming of the coral happen? I'm thinking like a sushi train. This is this is like dramatic <laughs> overkill, but it is on a motorized slider. This looks actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. A little dark still, but pretty good. Can you tell us more about snack? <laughs> Just don't touch them. It'll be fine. And they're not hot dogs. The app would beg to differ. I should have downloaded that app. <laughs> that would have been fun. Uh, care requirements and, and whatnot. It's it's more of a nocturnal coral, um, and so you'll only see it really extend you know later in the evening and, and whatnot. Uh, it's it practically has like no real requirements. You should probably though feed just before lights out time. Give it the best chance to grab something. Yeah, it's something that most people won't have. It's it's definitely weird. What corals can I put rather close that won't annihilate each other? Um, thinking mushrooms and leathers and stuff like that you could probably do. 
That's probably the safest bet. That guy just, he cooperated. He went yeah. back in and came back. Oh. Oh. It's all, when you pointed at it, it's know, like, it, was like <laughs> it looked like it reacted. It's like, that that's impossible. Yeah, that's, that's not how <laughs> reality works. That was funny. It was a glitch in the Matrix. Yeah. Speaking of, do you know they're remaking the Matrix? Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. So, one, one thing I was just thinking is, why are they remaking the Matrix? Because it's 25 years old. It's not 25. It's, it's, it's like... It's close to 20. It's, 20. it's, it's like 18 it's over years 20. old. Yeah, but something. really, what can they do that make it... Okay, so here's the thing. What can they do? I mean, visually, it still holds up pretty well, the effects. So what do they... How do they re... Well, he, they, is it a remake or is it an offshoot? See, I don't even know. But here's one thing that I thought was interesting. Like, on YouTube, I saw this video that was arguing that... Neo was not the one. And when uh, they made this argument, it actually made a, a lot more sense than Neo being the one. He did a hell of a lot for not being the one. And it made the made the entire series cuz like you know the, the second and third parts I didn't really enjoy, but Correct. but looking at it from the perspective of Neo not being the one, those two movies just got a lot better. I I'll, I'll have to show you that video like after the after the stream here. But, like, it, it was, like, very convincing, and I'm like, that made the story a lot better. They're just waiting 18 years to result, to, to bring it all together. Maybe they shouldn't, they, maybe they shouldn't dumb it down. Maybe that was the plan all along, and it was just confusing. That's why I didn't like it, because I was dumb. And, but, yeah, it's like, one, one, once that, that wrinkle got thrown in, and, and it's, it's more like a fan theory, but it makes so much sense. I'm like, yes, it's perfect. It fits perfectly now. Everything. Uh, frog spawn and torch close together. Um, they uh, fight. I've, I've had frog spawn take out torches. Yeah, they fight. I mean, usually it's not like to disastrous results, but they definitely do. They definitely do. Uh, can I grow corals in natural sunlight? Some, so, some like it, some don't. A lot of a lot of things depending on where you where you where you live can't handle the fluctuation seasons like you couldn't you really shouldn't do it in ohio like we're in a greenhouse the, the idea was we would just use natural sunlight it doesn't work because of the fluctuation in, in light intensity from season to season if you live in arizona more consistent problem is you have to keep it cool uh, if you want to do it in montreal also consistent problem is you have to keep it warm so it's just it's a give and take What's the funniest show on TV at the moment? I missed it. Are they still talking about Silicon Valley? I don't think so. 227. 227. Come on, we know when Harry Met Sally is the best movie. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I did enjoy that movie though, <laughs> when, when I saw it when I was 12. Or whenever it came yeah, out. Yeah, that's early 90s, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think what other good movies are supposed to be coming out. That Star Battles or something in December? Star Battles. Something like that. Wars? Star Wars. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be good this time. I thought The Force Awakens was good. I, I, thought, I thought it was okay. Well, you know, rehash, swear word. It, it was episode was, four all over again. A lot of it, yeah. But I like I like what it set up, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I like what it set up, and I look forward to seeing how it goes forward. So. And the Last Jedi trailer looks. You like Looks it? good, yeah. In my opinion. So I um. I had just watched a whole bunch of clips of the prequels, the, the, the prequel trilogy, and it was so bad, and I saw some deleted scenes from that that were much worse than what eventually made it to the screen. And after seeing that, then I watched Force Awakens, and I thought it was, like, marvelous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so compared, to, compared against that, it was so good. Uh, 
Uh, helmet coral aquacultured. Um, tongue corals, yes. Helmet coral, no. Uh, House of Cards is supposed to start up again. I enjoy it, but that's not my favorite show. Have you seen House of Cards? I have not. It's pretty good. Kevin Spacey. Hey, this looks familiar. Kind of, I can't quite make can't, it out. Uh, 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 almost. There we go. There we go. This thing is so insanely yellow. I love it. It is. It's my favorite nice. coral that we got from you. It's one, I think it's one you've been waiting for. I think you've asked for it a couple times, but now it's, it's finally ready to cut. Let's guess Stan's age based on the movies he likes. I liked Lawrence of Arabia <laughs> and Citizen Kane. And ben the Hur, The Shining. You know what's crazy? I don't think I've seen Ben Hur. Wait, did did, did Kubrick direct that? No, it was a long time. That was Charlton Heston. Yeah. I don't think he was directing. No, he thing. directed Spartacus. Okay. That's why I was thinking. Charlton Heston. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day. Okay, so Ben Hur, right? That's the last two items, which I can't I can't show you the multi pack of snails. There's a 25 pack of Asterina snails. As Astrea snails. I keep on saying Asterina, but those are starfish. Yeah. And people, you know, corrected me in like the meanest way possible <laughs> on my video. But there's a 25 pack of Astrea snails available for $20. And I, w I do have a brief video. Don't that screw I can up show. on YouTube, man. You, you, you'll you get corrected. Of some multicolored bubble tip anemones. Yeah, Game of Thrones is coming back. Now that's that's my favorite show on television. See, it's, it's definitely on. not mine. I'm becoming like a book snob, and it's like now that George R. R. Martin's not like involved in the show, I'm like noticing like, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some sharks getting jumped over, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I don't need to see Clegane Bowl or whatever the hell people want to see. So I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on it completely because it's probably better than 90% of all the other shows that are out there, but Game of Thrones. All right, guys, thank you guys so much. Uh, that pretty much will wrap up this live show. We made good time, about two hours, about oh, close to three hours. Um, thanks again to the Patreon crowd. Let me give these guys a shout out. Uh, so Patreon.com/slash/TitleGardens if you want to become a donor. There's some some perks I, I again I apologize I need to put more perks up there for people uh, but these guys have contributed um, at the five dollar level and they get a shout out during this live show so thank you so much for Phil Mark Robert Steve Ryan Dave Nate Louise Nancy and Jeff um, once again I'll say this is the PSA there's gonna be no shipping on Monday it's gonna be Tuesday or later so anyway Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Somebody weekend. Wants something before you guys leave. Uh, before you guys leave, uh, can you show us your setup you have there? Um, of the greenhouse? Maybe not, but you can't see his tank. So I'll clear. I'll clear the runway so you can see. See this. Um. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So if you're interested in his tank, uh, there's a, you can search my channel for anything with um, with like what did I call it? I think you just call it Nathan's tank. I think so. Yeah, Nathan's reef. So just search, or, or you can probably just search Google for it, or just YouTube. You know, you'll you'll find like I, I probably made three or four different videos over the years of his tank. Um, Go Warriors, this guy. Yeah, we didn't even drink today. N next time, that they'll, they'll might, there might be alcohol involved, um, which is a million times more fun. Yeah, <laughs> these guys. Yeah. If we're doing a two and a half hour, three hour live show, that could get pretty rowdy at the end. It does. It, a, they, 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 they actually love probably it. for me, it'd be like forty five minutes in. I have no tolerance anymore. Yeah, and so uh, let's see what else. And if you wanted to see uh, anything for about our setup here. 
there's a bunch of like to look for like a greenhouse update video or something along those lines and you can see that so anyway i'm going to wrap it up thank you all for joining and enjoy the rest of your weekend bye